review? This this may be a an obvious answer, but I know on my phone when I use Zoom, if you swipe on your screen, there's different views you can. I, and again, I don't know what phone you're using, but on my iPhone, if you swipe the the video screen, it'll it'll oscillate between speaker view and gallery view. So that may be an option if you just swipe. On your screen, there's different views you can. I don't know what phone you're using, but on my iPhone. If you swipe the, the video screen, it'll, it'll oscillate between speaker view and gallery view. That may be an option if you just swipe. Okay, well, I switched the screen to the different view. If you swipe the video screen, it'll, it'll oscillate between speaker view and gallery view. That may be an option if you just swipe. We can't understand understand you right now, but I thought I this is Joe. I thought I heard you say earlier you tried to join on a computer, but we couldn't see you or something like that. Did you what what is your name? Like are you potentially listed as an attendee that I can promote? Not if you tell me your name, I might be able to see if you're on that list. She's not gone. See her. I think something. I think she disconnected. Did anyone catch her name? I stepped out. I did not. Her first name is Maria. That's all I know. Lisa Payne may have copied down her email. Yeah, Lisa. Do you did you catch her name? Let me look at the email and hold on. I'll tell you. I think her first name was Maria. Maria was her definitely her first name. That's right. Kozen, K-O-Z-A-N. I think what was happening there, whenever you're logged on to Zoom and you do it through your phone, you get some interference. And so she probably had her speaker up on her, on her, on her computer. I've had lots of practice with Zoom, unfortunately, in the last couple of months. <laughs> Lisa, can you just reach out to her and see if she, I don't know if you have her contact info. Wait, hold on. There's people keep joining as attendees. Let me see if she's one of them. No. The only, I mean, if she tries to join the normal link um the link that's on the agenda to join in zoom i can promote her to a panelist and she would be able she should be able to if she's using a compatible device be able to see us and change her settings to gallery view but i don't i don't know how to get a hold of her other than the email address that who's she gave the, you um who's the court reporter company Let's call them. I just sent her another email too. Okay. Because they'll know how they'll know how to get a hold of her. I could invite I could invite the court reporter to my office if this is a problem because they could sit. 10 feet away, for, away from me and they could see my whole big screen and they could see everybody that way. Mm -hmm. So if that's a problem going forward, no, Nicole, I've, done, I've done a lot of these, so it shouldn't be if they've got good connection, it should just work like clockwork, but. Mm -hmm. Nicole, do you have their phone number? I know we're dealing with a interim company, but do you have their something yes. besides an email address? Yes, I'm looking up that information now. And I'll reach
she, she emailed back and said she's trying to get on. She went to the YouTube link, but we couldn't hear. I'm going to tell her that that's only to view. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how viable an option that YouTube link really would be. Because she needs to be able to communicate with the chair. Yeah, she's yeah. got to be able to hear me, right? Because if I don't know, she can't take this down, we're in trouble. I'm going to send her the... Uh, wasn't she going to use too. Zoom for the audio, but the YouTube for visual? Yes. Um, Madam Chair, there's a couple of attendees that have raised their hand. I'm just going to go ahead and, if you don't mind, allow them to talk briefly and tell us what their question is. Um, certainly, that's fine, Joe. We'll handle it. We're not on the record, so we can right. try to answer informational questions. Nicholas Stewart, you have your hand raised. What can we help you with? You're on mute. I just was trying to see if I was logged in correctly. That's all. <laughs> you are. You're good. All right. Thank you. You can you can you can mute yourself again. All right. Joe, Nick's on my case uh, number five, I believe. Grant Foam, <laughs> you have your hand raised. What can we help you with? Yeah, it's uh, it's pronounced Tommy. I'm um, here for case number eight, but I just wanted to second everything that the reporter was saying. The gallery view seems to be disabled on the desktop version. I just wanted to kind of second that. So. Hmm. Okay. That's strange because mine's not, and I logged in the same way. Yeah, mine's working. I'm on a tablet, but mine works. Yeah, I mean, I, I logged on, you know what I mean? So I don't, that's odd that that the public, you know what I mean? Why would they have a different log? They don't have a different log on than the board members or staff, correct? Yeah, I can see it. Maria's back on. Next slide. Oh, there she is. Mine's, mine's working as well. Okay. Can I get a staff person to take care of the five people who have raised their hands so I can uh, help the court reporter, please? Hey, Maria. Maria, you need to turn your, um, you need to mute your, your, uh, your computer because you're getting back feed from your, from your phone. If you've got your computer on and your phone, Turn your microphone off on your on your computer. Can now yeah, okay now now try Maria now try to say something if you've done that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. The thing just came up and said they asked you to unmute the thing and it has your name on there now, so you're in the thing. Charge room. Uh, we're still on 68. Alan Johnson, you have your hand raised. What can we help you with? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I, I had all the same issues that the court reporter was saying that enter full screen is the only option. I think that's the host has to allow everyone to be able to see everyone else's image. And we can't do it. Well, I, I haven't changed any settings from a prior meeting. It's all the same. So let me see if I can find anything that. Well, I, I haven't changed any settings from a prior meeting. It's all the same. So let me see if I can find anything. Can you guys hear me out by any chance? 
Hello? Maria, Maria I hear you. you. Yeah, we can hear you, Maria. This is Teresa Otto, the chair. Okay. I have you on YouTube. Okay, but yeah, and we can hear that echo. So there's like an echo. There's a delay, isn't there? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. There's. Okay. I'm not sure this is going to work. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of speed. Yeah. This is not. This we can't. I mean, I can't hear anything. This is not going to work for the court reporter either. So I'm not sure. We. Need, I don't know if we should all log off and log back on. Well, well, the last couple of meetings, you know what I mean? So I don't know what the issue is. There's no setting, this is Joe again, there's no setting to change that um, where I can change how people can control gallery versus uh, speaker view. There's nothing to disable or enable to that effect. So I, I, there's not anything I can do about that. There's no setting, this is Joe again, there's no setting to change. It's like rebroadcast. Well, right. So what you're hearing. Sarah, what you're hearing is, is that our court reporter has her cell phone connected to us, but she's watching us on YouTube and there is a delay. So that's the problem. So she's gonna, she, to hear us and watch us, she's, it's gonna keep doing that. So that's not gonna be effective. So we need to figure out a different way to do this. Well, here's what I do, Ma Madam Chair. I muted her for now. She can unmute herself when she needs to speak to us. But otherwise, she should be able to hear us through her phone and watch us. It sounds like she's watching on YouTube, too. But um, at least we wouldn't get that feedback. Yeah, the problem is, is how am I going to know? Well, I guess she can unmute herself and tell us if she can't hear us or if there's a problem. Right. But I, I'm a little concerned about the delay, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's not that's not going to work very well. I added her as a panelist now, so it sent her and just sent her an uh, email to join as a panelist and see if that'll help. Yeah, let's let's try that. Maria, yeah. did you hear that? You got an it, you got an invite to be a panelist. Let's try to add you. You probably should have been that way to begin with. Yeah, it was sent to the person that came last time. Oh, I got you. So, Thanks, yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Maria, if you if you're hearing me, can you let us know? Yeah. Did you, Maria, did you did you hear that we sent you a new link for you to try to join? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. No, I can. We just sent you another link okay. that we'd like you to try to join okay. that way as a panelist, that's how you should have joined. And I think you might not have just gotten the right email. Okay, let me go try that then. Okay, all right, we'll wait for you. To the to the applicants and the people in the public that are here, please bear with us. We apologize about this. This has been our, what, third attempt to do this and the other two have gone without, without problems. So I think this is probably our technology uh, due date to have a little issue. So hopefully we'll get started in a few minutes, okay? Lisa. Somebody call me.
Oh, I see Maria. <laughs> there she is. Success. Okay, M Maria, you're muted now. Can you unmute yourself and then we'll, we should be able to hear you. Okay. Can you hear perfect. me? Yes, perfect. We can see you and hear you. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, that's, right. not, that's much better, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, hang on just a second now. No, take, your, take your time, get settled. I understand. This will be so much better. Then there won't be a delay and we won't have feedback. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, let me do this. Let me make sure I can see all of you now. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, so you understand, Maria, you haven't done one of these before with us, correct? Right. Okay. So we are a board. I want to introduce the board to you so you know who everybody is. And then there'll be people, of course, coming to give testimony and they will pop up and be recognized. So you'll see their names. Okay. But I'm, I'm Teresa Otto. I chair the board. All right. Yes. Uh, and then board members for your information are Mike Kelleher, Mark Ebbets, Randy Mixdorf, Anthony Benucci, and Tom Stiller. So those are the board members that will have questions and then we'll, we'll make motions and that type of thing, okay? Yes. Uh, and then staff people on, on that you see on square, Sarah Baxter is uh, with the city attorney's office, okay? Yes. Joe Rexwinkle is with the city. Olufu Abaji is with the city. Okay, hang on just a minute. Yep, that's what I know. I'm gonna let you write all this down because this is gonna be hard. I get it. <laughs> yeah. This is not like taking a deposition. No, it's not. Okay, A, G, B, A, J, A. Okay, I have two of the um, so, okay. staff. So uh, another staff person is Patty Knoll. You see her square? Yes. Um, and then Nicole Washington is another staff person. Okay. Um, Shu Wood, spelled X-U-E, and then last name Wood is another staff person. Okay. Zach Nelson is also part of the staff. Okay. Jamie Hickey, also a city staff member. Okay. Christopher um, Huey, am I saying that right? Sorry, I can. It's not spelled all the way out. Now I'm blanking. Yes, no that's problem. right. Huey, okay, H-U-E-Y. -E yeah, -E Thank you. And who did I miss? Anybody else that I missed that staff that's on? What about a J? There's a Jason D Davey. It's, I think he's an applicant, correct? Yes. Okay, okay. so he'll be an applicant. And Mike Kennard, I think also an applicant. Yes, I believe so. Okay, and so okay. And, and Alan Johnson and Nick, Nicholas Stewart, those are applicants. So when an applicant comes on, they'll identify themselves. So I'll give you a chance to, and we'll swear them in. You don't have to do that, Maria. I'll do that for you, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we'll try to give you a little, knowing that this is something that's new to you, I'll try to take it a little slower, okay? That'd be great. Um, yep. Okay, when you say the, the staff people, are they going to be speaking also? Some of them will, some of them won't, but I wanted to tell you who they are in case you've got a list and someone speaks, okay? But they'll identify themselves as they start speaking, okay? Okay, if they will do that, then that will take care of that issue. Um, I will tell you that I've done several Zooms and, um, you know, I will tell you that if someone starts talking before the other one's done, it cancels both of you out and I can't hear what either one of you are saying. So. Um, it's going to make for a less pleasant transcript if there's a lot of that going on. So I just like to 
warn people. I, I tell people to just kind of give it an awkward pause between one person speaking and the other, just so you know they're done. Um, and then I'll make my job easier. I don't, I don't have to stop you all as much, which I prefer to not have to stop everybody. I know that screws everybody up. So, um, but yeah, if we can just kind of do this slow and succinct and everything, then we're good. Okay. We're going to try this, Maria, and we'll try to go as slow as we can and still get 22 cases done this afternoon. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is everybody else ready? Okay. All right. Good afternoon to the public and the applicants. Welcome to the July 14th, 2020 Board of Zoning Adjustment Hearing. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, we would like to continue to thank you for your patience and having us have these meetings via Zoom. We understand it's not the most convenient for everybody, um, but we are at least pleased that we can continue to offer um, the city service through this um, um, platform. Joe, do you want to give everybody online sort of our general instructions that we give at every meeting, please? Yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, the first thing is to remember that Zoom is just a video conferencing platform. It is not specifically made for public hearings. So as um, Ms. Kozan referenced, um, it's really important to speak clearly and to wait your turn. And when your um, turn is called, whether you're the applicant staff or a citizen um, who's testifying, um, to provide your first and last name and then speak clearly. Um, if you are an applicant, when the um, chair uh, chairwoman calls the case, please raise your hand so I can promote you to a panelist so that you can be seen and heard by everyone. And the same thing goes with citizens who wish to testify. When the uh, planner or the applicant is speaking on your case, on the case you're interested in, go ahead and raise your hand. And when it's time for public testimony, you'll be um, promoted and able to speak and be seen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, with those general instructions, I'd like to begin taking cases that are on our docket today. Before we take any case, I would like to swear in all staff members who will be giving presentations on any case today. And to help our court reporter, um, we'll have you identify yourself after I swear you in. Would you all please raise your right hands, please? I see Jamie. Patty, are you going to be sworn? I'm here, yes. Okay. Do you all solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And I do. Thank you. Um, Olafu, let's start with you. Could you state your name, please? You're, you're muted, Olafu. Olafu, you're muted. Olafu Agbaji, and I do. Okay. Zach? Zach Nelson, and I do. Uh, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie Hickey, and I do. It's like wedding vows. I know, right? Chris. Christopher Huey, I do. Shu. <laughs> Shu Wood, I do. Patty. Patty Knoll, I do. And Joe. Joe Rexwinkle, I do. Okay, so for a woman who's never been married, that was a little awkward. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, all right, let's move on. This And your chair does have a funny sense of humor. She apologizes in advance. And with Zoom, she is even a little funnier, I think, or maybe not. You'll have to tell us at the end of this experience. Um, let, let's move to the first case on the board's docket, which is docket number one. The case number is 16. The address is 125 East 31st Street. Is the applicant present? Joe, the applicant is uh, Peter Ho. He has his hands raised. I've just promoted Mr. Ho to a panelist. They never gave us a case number, did they? Mr. Ho, if you could unmute, please, yes. I can see you. Yes. Um, Mr. Ho, would you state your name, please? Uh, Peter Ho with CBC Real Estate Group on behalf of um, Public Television 19, which is KCPT, which is the owner um, and also the applicant. Okay. Is there anyone else present in the audience interested in this 
in, in this um, case, the special use permit? I don't see anyone raising their hand, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ho, would you please, I need to swear you in, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ho, have you reviewed the staff report that was published online as it relates to the um, application today for special use permit? I have. Okay. If you would turn to the last page of that report, I believe there should be a listing of administrative exhibits. Oh, I'm not seeing that in the copy that I have, unfortunately. I don't show it in mine either. Okay. I will see if I can get it for Peter. Okay. Do we know how many we have? Bringing it now. Okay. I think I have just the eight standard exhibits and I'll put it on the screen. Okay, I'm sorry, which one is, it's eight? You said administrative exhibit? Eight, yep. Okay, so Mr. Ho, um, with every case, there are certain items that are connected. You will now see those. Can you see those, sir? Yes, Those I are can. items connected with your case. Do you have any objection to my admitting those for the board members to in, have those to review today? Any objection to that? Um, I do not have any objections. Okay, administrative exhibits one through eight will be admitted. Thank you, Olafu. If you can Thank you. Sorry out. about that. That's okay. That's all right. Um, I believe uh, in looking at that, Olafu, you have a PowerPoint presentation on this case, correct? Yes, I do. Okay, let's start there. Mr. Ho, after Olafu gives his presentation, we'll likely have questions for you, okay? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead, Olafu. Okay, make sure I can share my PowerPoint. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Madam Chair, members of the board, Olaf Wag, Baji City Planning and Developing Staff, um, this first case before you today is a request by uh, KCPT for a special use permit. And again, the site is in the midtown where my arrow is pointing to. To get this. Sorry, I have my screen on one side and the camera on the other. So I'll be looking at my screen. So not... that's okay, Olafu, you're fine. Go do what you need. That's so fine. yeah, the arrow is pointing to the site just in the midtown area. This is the site. It's located on East 31st Street and just uh the west of the site is Main Street and further east is Gillam Road. Linwood, as you can see, it's to the south. Um, this is the KCPT uh, site, the television station with the mast right to next to the site. Further in the background is uh, Liberty Memorial, Federal Reserve and Crown Center. This is a specific look at the site and the site before you today is at the north west corner of East 31st Terrace and Grand. So the request today is to, for a special use permit, to put a new parking lot on the site and then to modify the existing parking lot along uh, East 31st Street. This site is also within the main core um, special uh, overlay, the main core overlay district. So there are additional uh, criteria in terms of our landscaping, fencing, architectural materials that they have to do on the site. As you can see, there are existing residences to the south of the site and then to the east of the site. Um, the two pictures, this is a, the top one, is a view of the site looking east on East 31st Terrace. And it's, you can see there's a small retaining wall. So the site does sit, sit, does sit a little higher than the street. 
And then again, this is a look, the lower picture is a look of the site looking northwest on East 31st Terrace in Grand. So this is the, the proposed site. Um, this is the access to the site via the existing alley of Grand Avenue. This is a view of the of the uh, television station on East 31st Street looking west. And then this is looking east. And this is the second part, the existing parking lot that will then be uh, be improved, updated to make sure that they have adequate uh, ADA compliance and add landscaping and additional features to this parking lot. Um, although the site is zoned, the existing zoning on the site is both uh, B3, B4-5, and then uh, R1.5. Um, uh, section 88420-13, accessory parking area require the same or a more intense zoning, zoning classification than that required by the most intensive of the use served by the accessory parking area unless approved through a special use permit. That's the reason they're able to have a, uh, a parking lot in a lower zoning with, within a uh, residential district, even though the site is zoned commercial. And this, through the special use permit, they're able to then have a public hearing and address all the issues that could be, uh, could be encountered due to the parking. We did have, uh, they had a public, several public engagement. We had, uh, con they had contact with the adjoining residents and there were inputs that were uh, submitted by the resident through the plan commission process. And those were then uh, put into the conditions and corrections to the plan. And the overall plan will reflect that. So this is the site. We have two sites. On the northeast side where my arrow points is the existing parking. And then this is the new parking. So the overall site is about two acres. The zoning, like I said, is R1.5, B3-2 and B4-5. Overall parking for the site will then go to 95 parking spaces of which 73 will be at the lower right-hand corner, which are the new parking spaces. And then 24 of the existing, place, uh, existing spaces will be updated, which is on the lower upper, right, upper left-hand corner. Again, this is a closer look at the existing parking that will be modified. Then this is the new parking. So conditions that um, or corrections that were made to the plan include additional uh, landscape screening along the side and to make sure that the lights are, to make sure that the vehicle lights are properly screened. Also that the lighting need to meet the code. So every one of those will be addressed via the plan. This went to City Plan Commission on June 16th and the recommendation was for approval subject to the 15 conditions. Um, that ends my report and I'll take any questions. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ho, what would you like the board to know in addition to that presentation from Mr. Abanji? Um, um, Chairwoman, my only comment to the um, professional staff recommendations as outlined by um, um, Olafu, I believe there are 15 uh, conditions. Olafu, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, under um, item uh, condition number one, there are um, sub uh, categories A through H. It's on page five of the professional staff recommendations. Yes, sir. Um, item number G. 1G um, states that revised plans to show the minimum driveway width at 24 feet for the access shown at Grand Avenue. Um, this was brought up during the um, CPC um, session and um, Mr. Bryan, who is responsible for uh, that particular department, um, he did acknowledge that we could leave it as an existing alley. So Olafu, if for the for the other people on the BZA board, if you could show the alley access on your presentation. Okay. 
Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So the upper right hand corner, um, currently that's the alley. And I believe there was a photo that you showed also. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right, here. right there. Yes. So that that width of that uh, of that alley currently is about 14 feet from uh, which is the public right of way because it's a it's an alley that's um, in the right of way, and I know in the staff recommendation it was to widen that to 24 feet, which I understand is a normal um, ingress egress um, um, curb cut. However, if you widen that by 10 feet, you will now encroach into what is private property. So then we would have to modify um, that particular parcel and somehow deed it to the city. So um, after, after further discussion with, um, with Mr. Bryan, he acknowledged that, well, in that case, you could leave it as an existing alley. We would improve the alley because you can tell right now the alley is, is in need of improvement. So we would follow the current um, city standards for improving the alley as far as um, the pavement um, conditions, but we would um, prefer to leave it as it as it is the existing width, which is 14 feet. Okay, I can, number one is actually corrections to the plan. And I will talk to Jeff, confirm that, and we can um, take care of that. This will all come prior to issuance of building permit. So I'll verify that with Jeff Bryant. I thought there was additional discussion about uh, vacating the alley eventually, if you talk to the your next door neighbor um, down the road, but right, I will walk right, with down Jeff the road, right. Yes, yeah. We're, yeah, we're still reviewing our options if we if we want to proceed through that. Okay, so yeah, I'll talk to, I'll verify this with Jeff and if it has to come up, you have to satisfy A through H for you to get a building permit. So this number one is just correction you have to do to the plan. And if Jeff okays it and does not require you to do that, that's between me, you and Jeff. So that should be okay. 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 As, as, well, and that would be fine. I'm sure I know Jeff had emailed me back saying that, that he would agree, but I know it's not in the staff report. So therefore I just don't want to be, our client doesn't want to be held accountable for, you know, if this is in public record that we have to have it 24 feet wide. Now, Jeff, Jeff will be the one to uh, say if that's met or not. So. Okay. But my concern is, is we have a staff report from which uh, a board member is going to have to make a motion. So we're going to have to address something about 1G, correct? Um, maybe Ms. Baxter can confirm, but I believe we're going to have to have some clarification on how to address that if a board member wishes to make a motion in this case. Yes, I agree with that. So would it be acceptable, Mr. Othu? that a board member would uh, make a motion as it relates to approval of the special use permit, if that so be the motion, that it would be subject to all 15 conditions, but specifically with um, condition 1G, that that could be subject to change based on the approval of Jeff um, Bryan. Is that sufficient, Ms. Baxter? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, if they're if if they're not 100% ready to agree to the leaving it at the 14 feet, then okay. I think that will address it. Oh, okay. I just I mean I don't think we can do it any other way. Okay. Well, let me ask this question for first. Board members, do you have questions of the applicant or or Mr. Abaji? Um, Mark Ebbets for Olafu. Olafu on the 31st. Terrace opening, is that 24 feet? No. It's, uh, how wide is it, Peter? It is 24. It um, is 24 uh, feet. Yes, oh, 30, yes. sorry, I didn't get, that is 24 feet, yep. Yes. Thank you, Peter. Any other questions from board members? Randy Mixdorf had a question for Peter Ho. I was just curious as to why so much new parking is needed. Has there been more employees added to the building that requires these new spaces? Um, the, um, our, the reason that we're um, having parking on the, on the south side of the building is it provides um, the KCPT staff um, easier access to the facility. Currently, they do own two parking lots north of 31st Street. 
And for them to um, arrive at work, they have to cross 31st Street, which is at the top of the hill. And um, at times it gets very challenging to cross that street. And so this is a much safer um, pathway for uh, the employees to come to work. Is there a plan for the parking lots across the street then? Since that would seem like a lot of parking for this size of building. Yes, and uh, so it's still under review by um, the KCPT senior leadership, but there's a potential for repurposing those parking lots in the future. Any other questions? Hearing no other questions, um, then let me ask Mr. Ho, uh, other than that issue, you have no objection to the 15 conditions, correct? That is correct. Okay. And Mr. Ho, anything further that you'd like us to consider? Um, my own, and I know this is, this may be a small point, but I know that in, if, if part of the um, condition as this gets approved is subject to, um, and I, I know I'm sure um, Mr. Bryan is, um, gainfully employed within the city, but in the event that he leaves um, the city, then I would rather prefer it to be the public works department, you know, staff representative or some more general term than just a specific individual. We can handle that, Mr. Ho. That's, right. that, that is a, a fair point. All right. Board members having any other questions? Hearing no other questions, I would, inter oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stiller, I see your hand raised. Yes, sir. Um, I was curious, and you may have already asked, and maybe I just missed it, but uh, was there anybody else that had an interest in the case? I asked at the beginning, and no one else raised their hand. I missed it. Thank you. That's all right. I, I would make a motion. Then, Mr. Silver, go ahead with your motion. I would move in case number 16. 16. Thank you. Uh, I move that the board uh, grant uh, the request including all of the 15 conditions with an exception of 1G in the conditions uh, be changed to be subject to change by the traffic division of the Public Works Department. I have a motion from Mr. Stiller. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And chair votes with the motion the request has been approved as stated. Thank you, Mr. Ho, you may, you may sign off now. Thank you very much. All right, All right. let's Thank move that, then to our second case, which is docket number two, case number four. The address is 2700 East 49th Street. Is the applicant online? If so, please raise the applicant. Yeah, sorry. Would the applicant please raise your hand? I don't believe the applicant is intending to be here. Where um, this is being continued because the action has not yet been taken by City Plan Commission. Okay. So, so is there anyone else online interested in this request for a special use permit? Please raise your hand. I don't see anyone raising their hand. All right, then, um, Jamie, would you let us know what the continuous request is for duration of time, please? Yes, hi. Um, we are currently requesting continuance to the August docket. Um, again, this has not yet been voted upon by the City Plan Commission, so we need time in order to make that happen. So do we have only, we have just um, the second Tuesday in August, correct? August 11, Teresa. Okay. Do I have a motion to continue this matter without fee, Ms. Hickey? That's correct. Okay, do I have a motion to continue this matter without fee? So moved. I have a motion from Mr. Banuki. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Stiller. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This matter's continued to August 10th. Mr. Rexwinkle, before I take the next case, do we have any more continuances on today's docket? Because I'd like to address those first and get those out of the way. Yes, we do. We have the next one is docket item six, okay. which is case number 31 to 8217 North Indiana. 
Okay, let me call that one first. We'll just go through these and then Joe, you can tell me the next one. So let me call docket number 31, case, uh, I'm sorry, docket number six, case number 31, 8217 North Indiana. Is there someone, is there anyone online interested in this case? It's Patricia Jensen and I'm gonna go ahead and promote her. Thank you. Ms. Jensen, can you hear me? You're muted. Okay. Ms. Jensen, we can hear you. Somehow, oh, you can't see my smiling face though. No, now, now actually I can. <laughs> now you can. Now I can see you. Would and you interestingly enough, when you promote me to panelist, I can see all of you on right. your separate screens. Yeah. If you're just sitting there observing it, you just see who's talking. Right. That's so, we, we just understand FYI. That. Yeah. yeah. But so, um, Jensen, could you state your name for the record, please? Patricia Jensen with the Rouse Fretz Law Firm with offices located at 4510 Bellevue. Okay. Here today, raise, here today on behalf of the applicant. Yes. So. Sorry. Could you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly yeah. swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. And tell us again who you represent. I represent the applicant in both cases six and seven. They are related. I don't know if you want to call them both at once. They're supposed to both be continued. Yes, let's do. Um, so Madam Court Reporter, we will also take at this time docket number seven with a, um, a, a case number of 32 and a street address of 3798 Northeast Ferry Road. And Ms. Jensen's been sworn on both cases. What is your continuance request, Ms. Jensen? The continuance request is to August 11th. There is a um, zoning text amendment winding through, winding its way through uh, the city council and the city plan commission. Um, it was introduced by plan, uh, some city council members. It, it may result in this case um, being not needed. So um, that is the reason for the continuance. So both of these cases may just be dismissed is what you're Correct. saying? Correct. Okay. Is there anyone else online that's interested in either docket six or docket seven? Madam Chair, no one is raising their hand. Okay. Hearing that, do I have a motion from a board member to continue these two matters? So moved. I have a motion from Mr. Kelleher. Do I have a second? I have a second from Mr. Ebbets. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with this motion and these matters are continued to August 11th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. I'm here on the next one that will be dismissed. Okay, we'll talk to you in just a second. Let me handle okay. these other continuances really quickly, okay? Okay. All right, um, Joe, what else needs to be continued? We have docket item 12, which is case number 21 at 4720 Jefferson. Okay, let's move to docket number 12, case number 21, with the address of 4720 Jefferson. Is there anyone online on this case? I don't believe the applicant is online, but Jamie can tell us um, the reason for the continuance. Okay, Ms. Hicks, yes. go ahead. Um, this applicant, this, so this is a sign variance for the new Nordstrom site of the Country Club Plaza. Um, the applicant is hoping to appear in person, not just via video, um, once that resumes. And I believe that Nordstrom still has a travel restriction for all employees. So they're kind of just waiting it out. They're hoping October will be cleared for travel and for safety purposes. So they're holding out for, for an in-person meeting at this time. Okay. Well, at some point they may not have to, they may not want to wait forever. So yes, yeah, so we've, we've been in communication. Um, we're just kind of playing it by ear at this point. Okay. So the continuous is until October. Yes. I think October 13th, I believe is the date. Uh, I think it's the 12th. Maybe you're, no, is that right? Hold on. Maybe. I, nope. I'm on my, I'm a year ahead. One moment. If only. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be a year ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm really further behind. Yeah, you're correct. October 13th. All right, board members, do I have a motion in this case? So moved. I have a motion for Mr. Banuki. Do I have a second? Second. 
I have a second from Mr. Stiller. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This request has been um, continued until October 13th. Uh, Mr. Rexwinkle, what else needs to be continued? We have docket item 17, which is case number 23 at 4701 Northeast Stigley. Okay, let's call that case then, calling docket number 17, case number 23, with an address of 4701 Northeast Staley Road. Is the applicant or any other interested party online on this case? I believe the applicant is online. Um, Mr. Davey, I believe, is the applicant. I just promoted him. Mr. Davey, could you unmute yourself, please? And I can't see you, but can you hear us? Can you guys hear me now? I can hear you, yes. So, sorry, I thought I was lower in the docket. Oh, that's okay. Well, we'll just, we're moving through continuances. Um, yeah. Can I can see you now, too. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Can Good you afternoon. state your name, please? Yeah, Jason Davey on behalf of Casey Homily. Okay, would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Um, you're requesting a continuance in this matter? Yes, ma'am. And what's the basis for the continuance request? We have a meeting scheduled with um, Christina um, Johnson and her supervisor to inspect the property. Uh, that's going to happen this coming Friday. Okay. Does staff have any opposition to this continuance? No, Madam Chair. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Chu. Go ahead. No, staff support the um, and recommends the continuance without fee. Okay. And for the court reporter, that was Miss um, Wood speaking. All right, um, uh, board members, any questions about this continuance request? If not, um, do I have a motion? No motion? Could we uh, make a motion to continue this case to August 11 docket? I have a motion for Mr. Evans. Do I have a second? Sure. I have a second for Mr. Kel Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This matters continued to August 11th. Thank you, Mr. Davies. Thank you. All right. Any other continuances? Madam Chair, there are no more continuances. There are a couple dismissal requests. Okay, well, let's take Ms. Jensen's dismissal because she's waiting there patiently. That is docket item nine, case number 11470 at 1601 Prospect. Okay, let's move to that case and I will call docket number nine, case number uh, 11470 with an address of 1601 Prospect. Ms. Jensen, you're still under oath, is that correct? Correct. And would you tell us what you're requesting? Madam Chair, we are requesting you to dismiss this request for rehearing. As you recall, I represent the junior college. You all have been very, very patient as this as this request for rehearing has been continued for close to two years now, but a resolution was reached. All the agreements have been signed between the two parties. So we thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. I'm glad it could be resolved. There, is there anyone else online interested in this case? No one, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rexwinkle. Hearing that, do I have a motion from a board member to dismiss this matter? So moved. I have a motion for Mr. Kelleher. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second for Mr. Stiller. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This matter is dismissed. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Thank you. I'll see you in a little bit because I have another case. Okay. We'll, we'll re-promote you at that time. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Mr. Rexwinkle, I think we're going back then to docket number three. Is that correct? Yeah, if you we have more dismissals, would oh, you like to do those first yeah. or? You know, okay. I guess I would. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Yeah, what? Where should I go next? The uh, next, to... sorry, the next one is docket 16, case number 00139, located at 4000 Northeast 100th Street. Okay, I have found that. Let's call that case officially. Let's call docket number 16, case number 139, with an address of 4000 Northeast 100th Street. Is the applicant present? No one's present, Mr. Rexwickle? Um, I don't see the applicant's name that I'm aware of. Shu, do you know if they're rep being represented by anyone or are we handling this? 
for them? We are handling this for them at this point. Um, I don't see the applicant. Oh, I think there's one raised a hand. One second. I think it's the neighbor, David Robbins. Dobbins. Um, let me promote him. Okay. But he's not the applicant. I believe he was. Uh, it was the gal testified last time. Staff recommended to dismiss this, uh, or oh, staff recommended to continue this case off docket. Mr. Dobbins, can you hear me? This is Teresa Otto. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is um, this is the case about um, the building of the of the sort of accessory structure garage, and as I understand from Miss Wood, you're recommending not dismissal, but removal from the docket right the applicant has revised their plan but they wanted to continue working with the permit division um, and make sure they can get the permit for the revised plan and so far the right the revised plan seems like they don't need a variance uh, so staff recommended to continue this case off docket all right so mr dobbins do you understand that so it sounds like at this point we need that probably makes the most sense because there's nothing at this point before us to handle we have nothing to consider and if he's building it within the requirements we may not see you back here yes ma'am my, my only question was i wanted to know where i would go to find information about the revised plan um i believe the city staff can probably offline i would contact ms wood maybe she can help you with that is that, that okay ms wood yes i will okay all right thank you, thank you mr dobbins for uh, logging back on um, board members understand this request. Do I have a motion to remove this case off docket? So moved. I have a motion from Mr. Ebbets. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Banuki. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This matter is continued off. Oh, docket. I'm sorry, Teresa. Was that number 16? That was number 16. It uh, looks like I wasn't on the quorum, so I don't know if that me my second messes up the... Okay, well then let's redo that. I'm sorry, I just saw that too. Thank you, Mr. Banuki, for catching that. Sorry, I was not looking down far enough. Um, board members, let's withdraw that and let's start again. C um, can I have a motion to move this matter off docket? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Ebbets. Do I, I have a second from Mr. Stiller? Thank you, Mr. Stiller. Now. Now all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This matter has been removed off docket. Thank you. Mr. Rexwinkle, any other dismissals? Yes, the last one is docket 21. It's case number 49 at 6500 Marsh Avenue. Um, let's call then docket number 21, case number 49, with the address of 6500 Marsh Avenue. Is the applicant online? If so, please raise your hand. Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Knoll. This is Patty Knoll, staff. The applicant is not online and I don't believe he intended to be today. Staff is recommending dismissal. Uh, the application was filed and then staff made the determination that the variance would not be required. Okay, thank you, Ms. Knoll. Do I have a motion to dismiss this matter? I move. Thank you, I have a motion from Mr. Kelleher. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Stiller. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with this motion. This matter has been dismissed. All right. Let's move back to the regular docket then going forward. <laughs> We're going to move to docket number three, case number 21, with an address of 4400 Campbell Street. Is the applicant online? If so, please raise your hand for promotion. Madam Chair, I see Alan Hallquist has raised his hand, but I believe he's just um, a citizen interested in testifying potentially. Okay, all right. The applicant should be online. His name is Johnny Yusuf. I do not see him, Patty. Okay, I've been speaking to him all morning, so he's well aware, aware of the case. I don't see him either. I'm looking. Yeah, I don't see him either. So you want to promote Mr. Hawquist for a minute? Sure.
Mr. Hawkwist, can you hear me? I think you're on mute. Yeah, I see you now, Mr. Hawkwist. Are you here in opposition, Mr. Hawkwist? I am on behalf of the Neighborhood Association. Okay, okay. Um, Patty, um, yes. has this case been continued before? No, it has not. I, I would suggest, um, I correct, I have not been speaking with him. I've been emailing with him several times all morning. So why don't I, if, if you would like to hold off, I could try to contact him and see if he's going to appear today or not. Well, since Mr. Hallquist is here, let's do that. That way we can address this case. Mr. Hallquist, we're gonna just recess you for a minute and see if we can reach him. If not, we'll have to deal with this, okay? That's fine, that's right. fine. Th thank you, sir. All right, let's hold docket number three. And let's move to docket number four then, which is docket four, case number 38, with an address of 3885 Northeast 80th Terrace. Is the applicant online? That should be Scott Gosling, Madam Chair. Yes, I see him and I'm promoting him right now. Oops. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Gosling, I can hear you. I can't. Oh, no, I can. Now I can see you as well. Um, <laughs> sir, would you state you. Your, your name for the record? My name is Scott Gessling. G Gessling. Thank you. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Is there anyone else online interested in this case? This is a special use permit. Mr. Rexwinkle, is anyone raising their hand? No one is raising their hand, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, not to interrupt you, but it's for a variance, not a uh, oh, special. I'm sorry. Uh, you know what? I must have, I think I'm on my list. I have my hand too far down. I apologize. It is for a variance because we're on docket number four, correct? Correct. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, is it? Did you say it was Gessling? Gessling, that's correct. Gessling, you always guess. silent. Yep. Okay, that's what I thought you said. I wanted to make mm. sure. Mr. Gessling, you have you reviewed the staff report connected with the application? I have. I've been working okay. with uh, Chris and Chu uh, through the whole process. Great. Have you had uh, in that report at on the last page of the report, um, which is page number five, Right above Mr. Um, Huey's signature, there are a list of exhibits numbering one through eight. Those are items connected to your case. Do you have any objection to my admitting those for the board members to review this afternoon? Not at all. Okay, exhibits one through eight will be admitted. And Mr. Huey, we have a PowerPoint, correct? No video? Uh, the Scott did provide us a video, so I should be able to present that here after the PowerPoint. Should that be marked as another exhibit then? Oh, I apologize if I missed that. Yes, we do have a video. Okay, so should that be exhibit nine? Madam Chair, I think it should be um, exhibit 10 because if you look at the list in the staff report, there's two sevens. Oh, I see that. So it should actually be... It should so be, it the should second be. seven is the applicant submittal, so that should be number eight. Okay. And the PowerPoint should be nine and then the video would be 10. Okay, so let's be clear. So then I'm going to admit exhibits one through 10 with the clarification presented by Mr. Rexwinkle as to what exhibits eight and nine are. I'm sorry, Mr. Rexwinkle, I don't, I guess shouldn't there only be nine exhibits? Where's the 10th exhibit? There's two, in the staff report, there's two sevens. So one seven. So come in eight and then the yeah eight, yeah eight, nine i guess what i'm trying to understand is where's 10. the 10th would be the video i believe that that he that we have from the uh for the applicant. sorry the applicant i see okay okay now i'm yep. following sorry okay yep. <laughs> so i i will revise that statement and say i will admit administrative exhibits one through nine and i will admit exhibit 10 which is the applicant's video all right Mr. Huey, do you want to make the presentation, please? And then we'll have questions for the applicant. Um, Madam Chair, just real quick, you're seeing a full screen presentation of the PowerPoint, correct? This one? I, um, I am. I am seeing that, yes. Okay. Um, so before, so we have a variance request for 3885 Northeast Terrace Avenue. 
is the property is zoned R-10, and the applicant was seeking a variances to the, si to the setback requirements for accessory structure, and originally for the size limitations of a detached accessory structure as well. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail here shortly. Um, the property is located in the northern portion of Kansas City. As you see, the property is currently undeveloped. Um, there's kind of a, a larger area view, everything around it is zoned R10 and closely, more closely zoned into the property is uh, the parcel itself is just north of a adjacent church. Uh, to give you some context, this is Northeast 80th Terrace running east and west and North Antioch Road running north south. Here's a uh, street view of the corner of the intersection of 80th Terrace and Antioch looking in the southwesterly direction at the site in question. Sorry, Here Chris. is, what's that? Sorry, Chris, I wanted to go, that was southeast, southeast direction. Oh, you're right, I apologize, thank you, yeah. Hang on a minute, excuse me, can you guys hear me, the reporter? Yes, yes, yes we can. Okay, there are people talking that are not telling me who they are and I don't have your picture on there, so I can't even Okay, so, so Christopher Huey was talking and Mr. Gessling pointed out that it was the southeast versus southwest that helps you okay yeah guys she doesn't because we when we share a screen she can't see who's talking so before you speak just identify yourself please thank you okay go ahead christopher um here's a proposed site plan of the the, the house in question so as you can see uh, mr gessling is proposing a house here kind of the north uh east quadrant of the park parcel in question, and then a detached garage structure here on the southwest quadrant of the of the parcel in question. The variance uh, that was needed is for a accessory structure to be in front of the front plane of the house itself. Uh, this home is approximately, or this accessory structure, excuse me, is approximately 58 feet in front of the home. Uh, the reason for this is this particular site needs to be on a septic system. There is not a located uh, sanitary sewer main within the area that the, Mr. Gesslin could connect to. Um, and the way the, slide, the site uh, slopes, the proposal septic uh, field would be located in this general quadrant right here. Um, here are some building elevations of the proposed home. And as you can see here, this is an excerpt from the septic analysis provided by Mr. Gessling of how the site kind of slopes, the house being higher on the um, site's topography with the accessory building eventually going to further down the site's topography. So initially we had advertised for two particular variances. One was for the uh, front yard setback for a detached accessory structure. The second was to allow a 2000 square foot detached structure um, above the minimum requirements. Working with Mr. Gessling, he corrected uh, or found a correction that needed to be uh, evaluated on that detached structure um, oops, excuse me, jumped right there, uh, can be up to 800 square feet or well, one foot for every 10 feet of lot area. Uh, the site in question has an, enough area that the detached garage could be up to 3,900 square feet, which is not what's being proposed, but therefore staff is asking that variance B in this case be dismissed. So looking at variance A, just in a little bit more detail, um, the front yard of the corner of the uh, this is a code excerpt from 88820. One of the platted lot will be adjacent to the street <clears throat> in which a lot has the least dimension. So staff is considering the Antioch frontage, even though it's addressed off of 80th Terrace to be the front yard since it is the most narrow section by five feet. <clears throat> Therefore that a accessory structure can increase or can't be placed in front of the home itself. Therefore, the request before you is to have the detached accessory structure be, quote, in the front yard of the proposed house. And then moving on to variance B, this is the one we are asking for dismissal. As Mr. Gosling correctly pointed out that the building footprint of any detached accessory structure may go up to 800 square feet or a square foot, one square foot for every 10 square feet of lot area whichever is greater. So the variance B is no longer required with this particular application. Uh, let me, I will share the video here, bear with me. So 
doesn't want to cooperate. Bear with me. Sorry. <laughs> Um, Joe, it's not letting me share the uh, video for some reason. Um, try it this way. Hold on just a second. Mm -hmm. We can see your sc your screen. Can you see a video playing or just the file? We just just the files. Yeah, just the file list is all I can see as well. Hmm. That may not, we just may not be able to see it, it sounds like. Okay, I just refreshed it. It looks like it's finally connected. I apologize for the delay there. We can see it now. Okay. Um, so the Mr. Gosselin took the photo at the same corner as I as my street view image earlier at the corner of East 80 or excuse me Northeast 80th Terrace in North Antioch. This is looking at the site here to the south. This is looking at Antioch going southbound. Looking due west, due north, and then due east again back at the site. And with that, we can, I'm sorry, go ahead. And with that, we conclude my presentation. Okay. As I understand this, this house, when it would be constructed, the front, front of it is not going to face Antioch. Is that correct? So by, um, let me pull up the site plan again and share that. Okay. So um, actually, let me start at the building elevation. So this facade here, where you see the front door is facing western direction towards Antioch. Okay. The garage would be going north towards 80th Terrace. Um, the perhaps kind of confusing aspect is the site itself is addressed off at 80th Terrace, okay. even though by definition of the city's code, the more narrow street frontage on a corner lot is considered the front yard. So in this case, Antioch would be considered the front yard, which is the way the front door of the house does face. Okay, sorry, I just didn't, I, sorry. Thank you for that clarification. Mm, no problem. Okay. All right, Mr. Gessling, why do you believe we should grant this variance? Sure. Uh, thank you for the time. This is Scott Gessling, I appreciate it. Uh, so as we worked with the city, we, we took, uh, it took a couple of years to acquire the land and we've been working with the city for a little over a year now. Uh, the, the slope of the land, uh, the lot, the characteristics of a lot is really what drove the design and the layout. Uh, it slopes 10 feet from east to west, east being the higher side, west being the lower side. Uh, can we go forward one slot, Mr. Huey? If you mm -hmm. appreciate it. Uh, this is when we were working with the city, uh, Shu and, and, and team, or Ms. Wood and team, uh, they shared some information that was very helpful. We got involved with the city very early in the process. And there was no way for us to tap into any kind of sewer system that's existing. Uh, all of the sewer system runs uh, end just before we can access them in this property. There's no way to get to it within 200 feet, which was the requirement. Uh, and, and if we did, we would have to require lifts and things due to elevations. So when we looked at the property, since it slopes uh, roughly 10 feet from east to west, uh, we had to build the, the home structure towards the highest end of it. We also had to put the drain field to the highest end of it. When we did the perk test, it did perk, but it requires a, a drain field that's fairly shallow. So we had to use the slope of the land to be able to do that. The, the tanks would be on the lower end. So the house would go to the north northeast because the driveway would come off of 80th Terrace. 
that would allow it to drain uh, uh, using the septic system to the west, southwest, uh, to the lowest point where you see kind of the text in this image. The, leech, the, the drain field would be directly to the east from that uh, or to the right and using the slope to also uh, be able to, to drain that, that field. So all of the characteristics of this lot combined with the, the uh, need for the septic system really drove the design. By needing that uh, drain field to the south, allowing the driveway to come off the north, the only place to put the uh, accessory building was on the, the southwest with a driveway off of Antioch. So the characteristics here are really what drove the design for us, along with all the perk tests and all the information that was shared with us from the city. If you want to go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this shows that fall. So the elevation just inside the lot from the east is at 920. Uh, the lot reaches 910 down to 908, roughly street levels about 906, roughly. Uh, so we needed to use that fall for the septic system as well as the, the field. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Uh, so this is an excerpt from the design or from the uh, perk test that showed where the, uh, the evaluating company that did the test recommended how to build uh, the layout. Uh, and this is where they had the, the tanks on the southwest side towards the lowest point there in the lot. Uh, the, the field would be to the east up at the top of the hill. And then that left room for the structures to the northeast and the southwest. And the system up at top says it would have to be buried a certain way. Um, so just adding that in there that this is the system that, that needs to be uh, added for this type of soil. If you could go to the next one, please. All right, that was it. That was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, with all the information that we gathered with all the requirements from the city, uh, we, we worked uh, hand in hand with them to come up with a design that, that made sense based on the characteristics of the lot and the requirements that needed to be met. Okay. Um, Mr. Gessling, did you discuss this proposed construction plan with any of the neighbors? Yeah, we have. We gotten to know the neighbors quite well. And uh, I think everybody's excited to have something there. Right now it's a vacant lot. Uh, I think they're excited to have someone there who, who will appreciate it, mow it, take care of it, you know, all of those kinds of things. So I haven't had any issues. Uh, everybody that I've talked to has been fairly excited about the having the prosper of a neighbor coming in. So no objections to what you're proposing? None that I've found so far, no. Okay. Is there anyone else online who has a, uh, a comment on this case? Madam Chair, I don't see anyone raising their hand. Thank you, Mr. Rexwinkle. Board members, do you have questions for either Mr. Huey or Mr. Gessling? Hearing no questions, I would entertain a motion on this case. Madam Chair, in case number 38, um, I move that the uh, variance A be granted to permit the location of the um, out build accessory building in the front yard and I uh, move that the variance B be denied. I have a motion from Mr. Kelleher. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Banuki. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The request is granted as stated. Thank you. Good luck with your new home. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I'd like to go back to docket number three, if Mr. Uh, Youssef is online. He is online now. Okay, let's move back to docket number three. Uh, Mr. Rexwinkle, why don't you promote him and Mr. Um, Hallquist so that we can just move through this as needed? Yep. Okay, so let's call docket number three, case number 21, with an address of 4400 Campbell Street. Mr. Yusuf, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I need to swear you in. Um, I can't see you. Can you promote yourself to a video? Yes. Okay. Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Hallquist, can I swear you in at the same time, please? Yes. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Yusuf, have you um, reviewed the staff report that has been prepared as it relates to your request for a special use permit? Uh, yes, I did. I um, 
not very familiar with reports, but I, I, I feel like I understood the overall idea. Okay, I just have one simple question to get started. Yes, On page, page six of that report, um, right beneath Ms. Knoll's name, there's a list of exhibits that number one through eight. Any <laughs> objection to those being admitted for the board to consider this afternoon? Um, sorry, I'm gonna, trying to open the report. I can tell you what those are if it helps. So if you don't mind, just sure, yes. Please. Sure. It, th these are these are the sort of the foundation documents that we need in every case. So exhibit one is our zoning and development code. Um, no, exhibit two are the rules and regulations of the board. Um, number three are the qualifications of our members, uh, our board members. Um, number four is the published notice of this hearing in your case. Yes. Number five is the mailed notice of the case. Number six is the certification of mailing of the notice. Um, number seven is the staff report, which I think <clears throat> you read. And number eight is simply a PowerPoint presentation that the staff member will present to us. Yes. Okay. So having no objections to those, I will admit exhibits one through eight. Um, and Ms. Knoll, do you want to give a presentation for us? Yes. I'm sure in my screen you should be able to see it momentarily. Okay, thank you. We can. This is Patty Knoll, Staff, City Planning and Development Department. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Board. This is a request for variance to the allowable number of guests to permit 16 guests rather than the maximum of eight guests allowed by 88321 short term rental. There uh, was a uh, public hearing was required. The Hyde Park Neighborhood Association was notified. Public engagement has been met. Applicant was sent notice of meeting that was held Tuesday, June 30th, 6.30 p.m. by the applicant via Zoom. There were several persons in part participating. It should be noted that the applicant originally filed a request for special use permit and request for variance to the number of guests. After City Plan Commission last week, staff discussed this and there was some confusion because the applicant was speaking to various staff persons and the applicant subsequently filed a request for special use permit. However, the variance request was folded into that. So staff has determined that the special use permit was not actually necessary because an administrative approval application had previously been approved to allow eight guests. So today before you is simply the request for variance to allow 16 rather than eight guests. The property is located at 4400 Campbell Street within the Hyde Park Neighborhood Association. This is a view of the area. As you can see, the property is surrounded primarily by residential land uses, consisting of duplex, single family, and multifamily residential uses. This is the property located on the southwest corner of East 44th Street and Campbell Street. It is a large structure originally constructed as a single family home, but later appears to have been divided into as many as eight units. Uh, most recently, there were three units, one on each floor of the three story structure. There is a detached garage at the rear corner of the property. And this is a, a two stall garage. And then there is a somewhat short parking pad in front of that. There is some case history on this property in 2005, the Board of Zoning Adjustment upheld a decision of the Director of City Planning and Development to issue a certificate of legal non-conforming use that was to allow three multifamily residential units within the existing structure. The Hyde Park Neighborhood Association appealed to the Circuit Court, and in December of 2006, the Circuit Court reversed the decision of the Board rendering the decision to issue the Certificate of Legal Nonconforming Use illegal and void. In 2013, a receivership for the property contained a stipulation for dismissal that was entered into by Goshen Homes, which is the applicant, regarding renovation of the structure as a single family residence. The stipulation was negotiated with the Hyde Park Neighborhood Association and required the owner to use reasonable efforts to renovate and market the property as a single family residence it also required him to advise the neighborhood association as, if that was economically uh, not feasible before renovating the property for a multifamily residence. It further 
after renovation, the owner would aggressively market the property for sale for at least six months before renting it as a multifamily residence. It should be noted that at that time, short-term rental was not envisioned, so therefore was not addressed within that agreement. And it's, uh, there were no regulations existing regarding short-term rental when that stipulation was signed. <clears throat> In 2017, there was a 311 call request for service submitted with the caller stating that the property was being used as a party house on weekends with noise and disturbances all night. In 2018, the applicant applied for short-term rental type two. Staff then inspected the home to determine whether it had been arranged as a single family dwelling. Staff reported in December of 2019 that the property had been deconverted and was in single family occupancy uh, in that in a, arranged as single family. On March 9th of 2020, the city planning and development department staff administratively approved the type two short term rental permit for eight guests within the structure. The applicant has successfully submitted the consent to 55% of adjacent property owners as required by the ordinance in order to receive that administrative approval. So the request before you today is not to allow, necessarily to allow the use of short-term rental. That has already been established by issuance of that administrative approval uh, permit. The, the application today simply requests the variance to allow 16 guests rather than eight. So as I said, the property is located primarily within a residential area. It contains a, a structure that again has been originally constructed as a single family home later altered to contain multiple units as you can see the staircase has been added to allow access to the second floor there are other uh, entrances uh, that have, were added over the years the applicant states that the three-story 4500 square foot home contains seven bedrooms five bathrooms and three living rooms the uh, inspection by staff in december of last year confirmed that fact the property also contains the two car garage, which you can see in this view, located just to the west of the single family home. There is somewhat, some driveway space there, could, which uh, depending upon the size of the vehicle could accommodate two or possibly four additional vehicles without blocking the sidewalk. There is also street parking available. The um, factors to be considered in granting the variance uh, as, as to uh, whether the, the unique hardship or practical difficulties are the result of the actions of the property owner or applicant, their agent, employee, or contractor, whether granting the, the variance will result in advantages or special, special privileges to the applicant or property owner that this code denies to other land structures or uses, whether the variance is the minimum zoning variance necessary to provide relief, whether the variance will substantially interfere with or injure the rights of others whose property would be affected by allowance of the zoning variance. And finally, whether zoning variance is requested due to an intentional violation of the zoning and development code. In analyzing the applicant's request for variance, the, uh, as I said, jurisdiction is found under the short-term rental provisions 88.3.2103 short-term rental, non-owner occupied regulations type two, a, the condition of a 03A7 states that no more than two persons per each bedroom being rented plus one additional person per dwelling unit, not to exceed eight guests may occupy the unit. In this case, the applicant requests uh, 16 guests versus eight. Uh, in and addressing will a substantial change be produced in the neighborhood's character or substantial detriment be created to the adjoining properties. Staff's analysis is that the area is primarily single family, duplex residential with some multifamily. The potential for 16 guests rather than eight does increase the number of persons on the property, the demand for parking spaces and noise within the residential neighborhood and further enables potential for prohibited activities such as parties to occur. Again, uh, the regulations do not permit any uh, parties, events, uh, any such congregation. This is specifically that citation in the code. Again, as in regard to statement of practical difficulty, the applicant submitted a letter. An excerpt states that the request is should be justified due to the large lot size, the large house size, the history of the property. He states that before he purchased the property, it was an eight flex at some point. 
he states that he has offered this uh, before beyond the eight guest rule and recurring guests expect and hope they can continue using it. He cites the need for larger properties for short term rentals and the tax revenue that this property brings to Kansas City. And this concludes my presentation on this case. Thank you, Ms. Knoll. Mr. Youssef, why do you believe we should grant you um, a variance that in essence doubles the number of um, overnight guests? Yes, ma'am, thank you for um, the chance of uh, uh, reading everything and giving me the chance to uh, share just a little bit of history about the property and I'll try to keep it brief, but um, when I purchased this property right before closing in 2013, uh, the city approached me said that this property has been abandoned for many years um i have pictures and slideshow unfortunately i didn't have that ready but uh, i can share that but the property have been abandoned for multiple years multiple investors purchased the property and they could not feasibly uh, complete it because of the size and the cost of it uh, so they had me sign the city had me sign an agreement that i'm gonna uh, turn it back into a single family dwelling i'm gonna do it within uh, six months i'm gonna aggressively uh, market it for sale and um, if I'm unable to sell it, then I can rent it or um, discuss other options, which I believe at the time was approaching multifamily. I uh, did everything um, per requirement. I uh, completed the rehab um, and I listed it for sale. I was unable to sell it at the time, uh, even after lowering the price. Uh, took it off the market, tried to market it as a single family rental. It was uh, a very big struggle trying to rent it out based on the size. Um, the law in Kansas City does not allow more than five unrelated to live together. So I've had a uh, college student um, trying to live together, but would find out that there would be eight, nine college students. So we would have to reject their applications. I've had uh, five college students living there for a while and then unable to continue paying based on the size, utility cost, uh, and the nature of uh, how much it really costs to upkeep a property this size. Um, after that, I did find a large family, which is rare to find, a family with four kids. They rented it, and unfortunately, six months into their lease, uh, they were in delinquent, and they were unable to pay, again, based on the size and based on utility costs and the upkeep. Um, that was before the ordinance, uh, or there was clear ordinance for short-term rentals or Airbnb, and that's when, uh, before the ordinance were in place, I was one of the first neighbors to uh, have it on Airbnb um, and uh, it was uh, successful and it became for the very most part, 99% of the time, it was um, family gatherings. It was when you have a family coming for Thanksgiving, different, uh, different occasions, uh, birthdays. Um, uh, throughout the years, we've had only a couple of um, complaints. Um, two that I have a record of to be exact. And we've done a lot since then to try to avoid any potential uh, noise. Uh, we've added uh, exterior cameras that notify uh, my phone and another person's phone if there are too many people walking in and out. We have a two minimum day requirement for booking. So people that are looking for a place just for a party one night, they cannot book through us because they would have to pay for two days minimum. Um, for the very most part, it has been very positive. Uh, and, the, and once the ordinance came in place uh, with the new ordinance in 2018, uh, stating that it's super bedroom, which in this case would be 14 plus two in living room, which would be the 16. Um, actually, this one has two living rooms, but it would be 16 in that case. But the requirement also added, the new ordinance added 2018, that however, it cannot be more than eight guests, despite how big a property is. Um, uh, that being said, I was advised that the best thing and the right thing to do, even though there are over, I just checked today, there are over 135 properties in Kansas City, including multiple in Hyde Park, that do break the eight people rule and never applied for permits, but I wanted to go through the due diligence process with the city, be completely transparent, and I was told that in order for me to try to, um, to have it more than eight guests, I need to apply through the process, get through the approval process, get the approval of my and neighbors, 55% of my adjacent neighbors or more. And after I get uh, the approval for that, then I can apply for the variance. And that's why I'm here today. I would like to say that um, you will hear complaints, usually from neighbors that live far away or are in 
um, are in position with Hyde Park, but as far as my neighbors, the adjacent neighbors, they have shown support. I've received the 55% plus, um, which tells you, that should tell you something about um, how the picture being painted, that it's always party house and it's trash and all that is simply not true or accurate, uh, given that the neighbors that would not benefit at all for signing uh, or showing support have shown support. Uh, for the most part, they've been very glad and thankful that there's someone maintaining the property that was abandoned for, I believe, a decade. And uh, I've been very close in communications with them. Um, recently, I've also had the neighborhood hearing just to give the neighbors a chance. And there were a couple of uh, concerned neighbors in the block. And I've heard their thoughts and we've added few extra layers um, because I have been running this property now as eight guests uh, since the, my application was approved as a guest and we've definitely have had, um, I've had a big um, cut in the income to maintain the property, to keep the property since I'm going to a guest because again of the size of it. Uh, there are a lot of properties in Kansas City, three bedrooms that allow a guest. This is a seven bedroom house. Um, but despite that, we've had still people breaking the rule and trying to guests uh, coming in, 11, 12 guests coming in uh, without permission. So. Um, this is why I'm applying for variance because I want everything to uh, be done according to the city because of the size, because of the nature, because of the history of it being an eightplex and a threeplex, uh, because of the history of, of it being before the ordinance being in place of uh, being 16 guests for multiple years. Um, and because I truly believe that Kansas City does need few homes as exception or based on size or number of bedrooms that will allow larger gathering. Kansas City is known for a place where people come for families, for reunions, for um, celebrations and, um, and limiting it to eight as a whole rule for the city despite the size of a property does not do uh, justice uh, to the need. And I believe that my property is a perfect fit for that. And there are things as far as the few legitimate concerns I've received, there are things that are being done and has been done to uh, eliminate um, problems like that in the future. All right, thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Hawkwest, I'd like to hear from you, please. Yes, as uh, Ms. Knoll stated, this property has a long history with the Neighborhood Association. In 2004, a developer started renovating it as multifamily without getting permits. You can see they bumped out the third floor to add living units on the on the third floor. The neighborhood turned it in. The director of development issued a CLU for three units in 2005. The neighborhood association appealed that to the BZA and you held a hearing on July 26, 2005. You voted three to two to overturn the CLNU, but because it was an appeal and we didn't have four units, the effect was it was upheld. The neighborhood association and 14 nearby neighbors uh, appealed to the Circuit Court of Jackson County and Judge Del Muro on December 21, 2006, held that the CLNU was illegal and that it had to be a single family home. It was subsequently in receivership the Neighborhood Association was not a party to the receivership, um, but there was a stipulation for dismissal, which provided that uh, the property had to be uh, marketed as a single family house, renovated as a single family house. And uh, if they were unable to sell it, they could approach the Neighborhood Association and discuss multi-units, provided such use is permitted under zoning regulations. Um, it's not legal for two units, it's not legal for three units, and regardless, the neighborhood association's never been approached for any approval to renovate that as a multifamily property. To get around that, uh, as the case with other uh, problem properties in the neighborhood, it has been a Airbnb. Um, it's been a problem property. There have been lots of complaints. Mr. Yusuf referred to nearby neighbors across the street at 4405 Campbell is David Cole. He lives, he's an elderly gentleman. He lives in the house he grew up in. He doesn't have a computer. He doesn't have a, a smartphone. He uses a flip phone and he wants to appear in person, but I explained to him he can't. Uh, he and other neighbors have called me numerous times. Mr. Cole refers to it as Animal House. 
that flat roof that you see on the screen, there's been uh, multiple people on the roof of that partying at two o'clock in the morning. Um, it's incompatible with a neighborhood of residential owner-occupied properties. Uh, all around it are single family owner-occupied homes. Um, eight is too many. The fact that Mr. Yusuf knowingly took this property on and has been unable to sell it um, is not uh, a burden that the neighborhood should bear the, the consequences of the risk that he assumed. His application refers to the lot, large lot size. That's not true. It's a 55 foot wide lot. It's got 7,535 square feet. There's not parking for 16 occupants. Uh, the fact that it has seven bedrooms and five bathrooms is due in large part to the fact that unauthorized illegal construction work was done to expand the third floor and in an initial effort to convert it to a, an illegal triplex. It's never been an eightplex. Um, the director of development uh, prepared a chart for the BZA hearing back in 2006. It was admitted before the BZA as exhibit 194. And it tracked the occupancy over the years. It showed that there were 22 years when there was one occupant of the property, 20 years when there were two, or 20, yeah, 20 years when there were two occupants, 21 units or years when there were three occupants, and 11 years when there were four occupants. Um, it should be a single family house because of prior owners spending a lot of money to put ugly siding on the outside and expand and bump out the roof. It's an undesirable property without somebody investing a lot of money to return it to the character compatible with the neighborhood. But it should not be a party house for 16 occupants in a residential neighborhood. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Is there anyone else online um, that's interested in this case that I didn't get um, in my uh, first request? Yeah, Madam I, Chair, there was an additional person named Christine Taylor Butler, and we have two other people who have since raised their hand, Angela Split Gerber and Joan Doherty. Okay, um, and Ms. Noel, can you not share your screen so we can see these individuals and it'll make it easier on the court reporter to take down their testimony? And Mr. Rexwinkle, yes, I'm working on that. Can you publish, can you allow the other? Um, yeah, Ms. Taylor Butler should be able to speak now. Okay, I, oh, I, can't, I can't see her. Uh, Ma'am, I'm, I'm, work, I'm working on that. Yes. Okay, just a second. Let me see okay. everybody. It'll make sure. it so much easier on a court reporter. Okay. Joe, are you are you able to turn my screen off? Oh, there we go. Thank you. you got it. Okay, that's my All right. Um, Ms. Taylor Butler, I see you. Would you state your name, please? Yes, my name is Christine Taylor hyphen Butler. And would you raise your hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. What are your what's your testimony that you'd like us to consider today? I've been a High Park resident for 30 years. I also own an Airbnb that has a hundred percent signatures from adjacent um, homeowners. We have been in this neighborhood pretty supportive of people who go through this the right way. Um, I don't live far away. I own a property at, um, at the corner of 39th and Campbell. Um, so I'm only a couple of blocks north. Um, and I wanted to address something in the staff report, which was whether the zoning variance is being requested due to an intentional violation of this zoning and development code. Um, as you know, a lot of people had Airbnbs before the final law was passed. Um, when it was passed, all the rules and regulations were online. They were in the press. Um, there's a Facebook page of local owners. Everyone understood that the maximum occupancy was eight. Eight. So I went back and looked at Mr. Youssef's um, Airbnb page, and I don't know if he had it listed under another listing, but he has 100 reviews starting in November of 2018, which is several months after that law was passed, 
And many of them refer to it is perfect for large groups. There have been groups as high as 20. Um, they are all in the reviews with the names of the people who stayed there starting in 2018. And as late as March of this year, Mr. Youssef was on social media bragging about he had the largest Airbnb in Kansas City and inviting people to apply for a free weekend, a three day weekend or a free week for them and up to 17 of their friends. 600 or more than 600 people applied. He picked a winner and told the woman that she was eligible to stay at that house with 17 of her friends. That's March of this year. I think this variance is being requested because neighbors have been reporting them. It's known as animal house on the block. I don't think the neighbors who signed the document knew what they were getting into. He is now on social media saying, once you rent, you can't really control what your guests do. Um, so I don't think he should have a variance for 16. I am concerned that even with eight, there are ways to circumvent that and we will still end up with 20 in that house. Um, thank you, Ms. Taylor Butler. You're um, welcome. Um, who else has joined us that wishes to speak on this case? The next person I promoted was Angela Splitgerber. Ms. Splitgerber, do you wish to speak? I do. Can you hear me? I can. I can't see you. I need to swear you in. Okay. I'm holding my hand up. Okay. <laughs> Here's the, I'll let me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay. Go ahead. My name is Angela Split Gerber. Um, that's S P L I T T G E R B E R. Um, I live in Hyde Park at 3341 Campbell Street, Kansas City, Missouri, 64109. Um, I am here to oppose this requested variance. Um, I want to address a few of the um, points that the board is um, required to consider. Um, the first one being the any claim of hardship or practical difficulty um, being the result um, of the property owner or the applicant. Um, at this point in time, um, the idea that this was once eight units is really irrelevant to the discussion. By you know, 20, 2006, at least 14 years ago, this property was single family. Um, and so it was open and obvious when this property was purchased that it was zoned single family. Um, and there was even a stipulation entered into to that effect. Um, the idea that this property is unmanageable um, as a single family home, either to be sold um, or to be rented is really quite absurd, especially in the current market. Um, but I do want to draw note, um, the investor here um, posted a video on YouTube um, on July 9th of this year. And um, in his own words, he said, the only way that Airbnb can be a safe investment is if you are not counting on Airbnb as the end final means, which means that if Airbnb doesn't work or if things change and the laws change, you have to be able to justify turning this house into a long-term rental. If you don't do the math or you do the math and the math does not make sense as a long-term rental, you probably shouldn't turn this property into an Airbnb. Competition can change. You know, when I started Airbnb, I started early on and I didn't have much competition. Now there are incredible Airbnb Airbnbs all along my Airbnb and I have to up my game. So it's not predictable with laws, with competition, with expectations. So you have to plan for the worst and expect the best, but plan for the worst, which is if the competition is too much, if the laws change, if the neighbors complain enough that they want to shut it down because some people break the rules or whatever, you know, how are you prepared? So Airbnb, you have to go in saying, I'm going to give it my best. But if I change my mind, I get too tired, the laws change, and I have to shut it down, I'm not going to be heartbroken, I'm not going to go bankrupt, I'm going to be okay. So keep that in mind. 
Um, you know, in this circumstance, the idea that the ordinance has somehow stopped him from operating at the level that he was illegally operating prior to the creation of the ordinance is something that um, doesn't inure to his benefit. Um, his confession that he operated outside the bounds of city code, um, the idea that he um, knows lots of people who are breaking the law and he should be able to break the law along with them, but only get a variance for it um, is ridiculous. You don't get grandfathered in because you broke the law and committing other people committing a crime doesn't mean that you should be allowed to have a variance to do the same thing. Um, the second point that I want to address is um, the idea of interfering with or injuring the rights of others whose property would be affected. I attended the Zoom call with the, with the investor. Um, there were three individuals on that call. Two were immediate property neighbors. I am not immediately next to the property. Um, and I know one of them I think was mentioned, so I expect that she will speak. But this, pro this property has been an issue um, for years. And even with the idea that um, the property owner mentioned that he has put up cameras or put in two day layer, uh, two day minimums or has quote added extra layers, um, it's just not solving the problem. Even with all of these things, um, I heard that on this call that there was a raging party on Memorial Day weekend where the police had to be called and that that isn't an isolated event. Um, I'd also like to note again that on that YouTube video from July 9th, the owner actually said, the deal with Airbnb is, unfortunately, people are there to party, people are there to have a good time, people are there to hang out, people are there with their kids, and they are not gonna care about the house the way you care for it. Yeah, they're gonna try not to damage it so they don't lose the deposit, but they are just not gonna care as much. He then went on to say that you can't enact systems such as you know, the cameras or other things um, because they don't really work. He said, systems are great, but this kind of business is not system proof. You are always gonna have to deal with logistics that are different and unique. So by his own words, he is showing that he knows that even though he's put these quote systems or layers into place, that they're not going to successfully manage this. And I, I thought that most telling was the fact that on the call he provided his quote personal phone number to the neighbors and asked them to take responsibility for policing his property. Um, once that happens, then the, the, the problem has already occurred. He can come in and maybe do something he can keep the deposit, um, which kind of provides an incentive for him to have people who forfeit their deposits, but you don't transfer the burden for not being a problem property onto the neighbors. Finally, with regard to the intentional violations of city code, I will just echo that on March 23rd of 2020, he was on Facebook advertising to um, rent this property, open it up to more than 18 to 18 people. Um, and so he clearly is still um, disregarding city code. Um, I would like to offer, I provided Ms. Knoll with a notarized letter that has actual screenshots of that Facebook page. I'd like to offer that into evidence. And I just like to say that from pu putting aside the issues with this problem, um, or with this property, um, it, it just, it does not in any way make sense to have a 16 person hotel in a residential neighborhood in a single family home. And so again, I would just ask that this board deny the variance. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, Ms. Knoll. Um, has that uh, item been marked as an exhibit? It has not been marked. Okay, I think um, she offered it. I will need to, I will admit it based on what she's described, but we need to show it to the board. Yes, do you want me to share my screen? Yes, and, and uh, Ms. Baxter, should we make this exhibit nine? Yes. Okay, this will be admitted as exhibit nine.
Okay, you should be able to see this. I will zoom. Um, Angela, I, you have a, a letter that precedes this, so I don't know where you want me to start or. Um, Patty, the, the one actually just that I sent you um, yesterday that's notarized would be the appropriate one. It's been updated and um, you could start just on page seven and show them those screenshots on seven and eight. Okay, I have that here. This is page seven. Is that what you're asking for, Angela? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is this should be page seven visible. We can see that. We can see that, Ms. Knoll. You can move to the. Is there another page? Okay, thank you. All right, um, anyone else online wishes to speak on this case? Madam Chair, there was one additional person. I believe her name is Joan Doherty. Okay, Ms. Doherty, are you online? Can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? I can hear you, I cannot see you. Yeah, I don't know why that is, but I am also sitting here with Dave Cole the neighbor that does not have access to um, internet. And so he came down to my house so that he could be on this as well. Okay, so are you both going to want to speak or, or just um, one of I you? I think both of us, yes. Okay, I'm gonna swear you both in and then I want you to speak separately. So Ms. Sure. Jordy, let's start with you first. Would you raise your right hand? It's raised. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And Mr. Cole, can you state your name for the record, please? David Cole, C-O-L-E. And would you raise your hand and tell me when it, you have it raised? My hand's raised. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right, Ms. Doherty, why don't you go first, and then we'll hear from Mr. Cole. <laughs> well, as a neighbor that has lived in this neighborhood for over 32 years, um, we look at us as our block and the block that is up ahead of us as we are a real community. And since the property at 4400 Campbell has moved in, it has taken away our sanctuary. I'm going to talk from a place of emotion and to tell you what has happened in that house. I can't say he's violated this, but all I know is that even though he says that he only allows eight people there, there's never only eight people there. There was always more. I have had the opportunity where I have had to call the police many times on this property. And the latest one was on Memorial Day. The party started about 1030 at night and it went till five o'clock in the morning. And there were over a hundred people at that party. And the street was just totally packed and it carried over into the street. There was a fight that broke out and so we're asking that you say no, because if you say yes to 16, how many more people are there going to have? This is, you know, there are children that live across the street. There's three little ones that live right across the street from the property. Two houses to the west of that, there's, more, there's two other little kids that live there. The guests and the property owner have been disrespectful of our neighborhood, and they disregard what, you know, what our neighborhood is all about. Um, they park in front of other people's driveways. They um, the, um, they're, were fearful that when they have these big parties, we have no idea who has been invited to that home. And it takes away our peace of mind. And when they leave, there is mountains of trash. And sometimes the trash doesn't get picked up, you know, because they put too many at the curb and it just lays there for a long time. And then the grass gets bigger and taller. And so um, since this is our neighborhood and this is our sanctuary and most of the block and all of this block and the block up ahead and the houses behind them, we are single family homes. And we feel that this property is taking away our peace, is taking away our sanctuary. And so we do ask that you, you do not pass him to have 16 people there. He, um, I was on that Zoom call when um, 
he was talking to people and I had contacted him after the uh, Memorial Day party. And I told him, you know, I want you to be aware of what is happening on your property. And he says he all has all these things in place, but time after time, none of that seems to really be in place. And he offered me, can I put a little, you know, can I bring you something to, just for the trouble that you have been through? And I don't want a gift card. I don't want anything like that. What I want is our neighborhood to be safe. And what I want is to make sure that we don't have more than eight people. He's already violating that code. So thank you for letting me talk. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Cole. Thank you, Ms. Doherty. Mr. Cole, go ahead. Okay, I've been living here at 4405 Campbell for 60 years. I was born and raised here. And the property across the street, he says he rents it out as uh, for eight people. I've witnessed, I don't know how many times, there's been over 50 people, maybe more than that. There's been over a hundred cars parked up and down Campbell Street on both sides, 44th Street going from Campbell to Harrison on both sides, going from Campbell to Charlotte on both sides of the street, blocking the fire hydrant to where if one of these houses catches on fire, they're not going to be able to get to the fire hydrant and put the fires out because the houses are so close together. And you're going to have a, a, a disaster and probably a lot of people burning up in their homes because they don't, can't get access to the fire hydrant, the fire department. But I've also called over 15 times to the police department on this property and they have shown up. They've came with paddy wagons, patrol cars, and I've also witnessed urination off of the front porch. A lady kicked out the window on the second floor. It would be the right hand side if you're looking at the property. The right window was kicked out and I'm surprised she didn't cut her leg off. And I watched that personally. She climbs out on the roof. She's dancing on the roof. So then more people come out the window and then a, a guy standing up there, he's urinating off the top of the roof. So uh, Alan Hallquist, he about hit the bullseye when he spoke, but he left a few things out that I've just said. And I mean, you can get the police reports and I'm, I'm sick. I put in new windows in my house I can't even open my windows at night when it's nice and cool because we kind of live down in a valley and it gets kind of cool at night. I can't even raise my windows at night. I have to get out of my bedroom, go downstairs and sleep downstairs because my bottom floor, I have brick siding and it kind of helps with the noise. So I am sick and tired of this all this is not a bed and breakfast. This is a party hall. So the next thing, what was he going to have? Uh, weddings? Uh, I have, I have no clue. I just, it, I get, I'm just tired of it. It's, it's to where I, I want to get out of here. I'm sick of living here because of this across the street. I mean, I do have more to say, and I, I, I can't think of it right now. It's just, I get upset about it, but I try to keep calm. And I've even talked to Mr. Youssef. He's come and knocked on my door, which he, I can go on and on and on, but I don't know if you have the time. Uh, Mr. Cole, I think we understand the nature of your, of your concerns. Thank you, sir. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, is there anyone else that needed to speak? All right, Mr. Youssef, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a brief rebuttal and then um, 
I have a question for Mr. Cole yeah. before he goes offline. Mr. Cole, can you hear me? This is Mark Evans. I'm on the board. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cole. Next door to Yousef, I'm guessing it'd be 4402 Campbell. Do they ever complain or what's their status next door? I've talked to her and she said, well, when they were remodeling the place that they put up a privacy fence for her. And I said, it is not for you. That's just to make you be quiet. And she won't get involved in anything. So uh, she's fine with it. But I know she isn't. But she, like I said, she won't get involved in anything, you know, because and, and her health's not good either. So. Well, thank you, Mr. Cole, for your testimony on, on the next door neighbor as well. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Any other questions from board members? Okay, Mr. Youssef, I'm going to give you about two minutes to rebut the comments, and then we need to make a vote because we've got to we've got several other cases we've got sure. to hear again today. Yes, it obviously, it's very hard to try to respond to all of that in two minutes. I'll do my best. Um, uh, I would like to say a few things. Uh, one is. Um, and I, I try my best not to take everything personal, but there has been some uh, things that are not accurate that are important to say. As far as the neighbor next door, um, the neighbor next door has actually thanked me multiple times that I've taken an abandoned property that's been there for 10 plus years left. And she thanked me. She did mention once she said, I wish there is a big family there, but I realize you don't see those anymore. Uh, but I, I'm in a very good relationship with the adjusted neighbors. And that's the irony of it all, the adjusted neighbors um, have my numbers and they are happy with what I've done in the neighborhood. Um, as far as uh, Mr. Cole, I, I try not to get personal, but when I, uh, when I met with him first time, he actually mentioned the whole story of uh, someone urinating and the partying and he, and that was before I purchased the property. So I think a concern I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Ms. Doherty, can you, can you mute yourself? I can't have people laughing. It, it interrupts the court reporter. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Doherty. Um, so a lot of these problems that I were expressed to me when I came into the neighborhood were before I owned the property. Um, as far as the amount of uh, issues they're saying they're having, um, I would argue and say, uh, where are the evidence for that? When they say that there were 100 people in the neighborhood, I am aware that twice in, in Memorial Day 2020 and in 2017, those are the two times we've had events where people had parties and as soon as I was informed, I did everything I can to end it. Um, these are people that broke the rules, even when it was eight guests, even if it was only four guests, they would have broken the rules. And uh, Ms. Split Gerber is an attorney, she, so she knows how to frame things well. And I've worked with her before, but when I offered the neighborhood my phone number, it's because I said, I live a mile away. I care about the neighborhood. There are two instances only since I've bought the property where I've had complaints about. I said, if anything happens within 10 minutes, I will show up and make sure it's taken care of. So I think the problem that we're having is a lot of those complaints that they're having, there's no evidence and there's no record of any of that. I have not been contacted for that. I'm not saying it's expected, but there's just no evidence. And a lot of those complaints had to do with when the house was a sixplex or, or more before my purchase. Um, the, the aid guest unit, actually, the fact that people are breaking it does tell you the problem that we are having in Kansas City, where there, where Kansas City is a place where people are gathering, mostly it has been family and friends gathering and needing a place to gather. And with aid guests, uh, it becomes a problem where people are breaking the rules. I've had the aid guest rules once I passed the ordinance, and I uh, once, I, once uh, the ordinance was passed, I did the aid guest, and I have followed that accordingly. I don't want to get into details, but the Instagram post was for friends saying because COVID-19 hit, when things reopen, I was offering friends that there is empty space in my Facebook friendship circle that they can have it. And as a, a homeowner, I can have uh, 16, 17 guests. That was not an Airbnb thing. That was me inviting friends over, but as far as me following the ordinance, once I got approved for the eight guests and once that was clear and I applied and went through the process, it has been eight guests. Um, so I don't have much time to go through the events and everything, but I will 
uh, wrap it up there and I'll just argue and say a lot of the things that are complaints are, are, are being told without any evidence. A lot of things have been before I purchased the property, I've made myself available to neighbors, I've given my cell phone, and I've had the adjacent neighbors mostly satisfied, uh, at least the ones that are on both sides and behind me uh, with everything I have done and I do care about the property. Um, so, sir, I'm just one board member, but your request is something that I have a concern about and I want to be very clear as to why so you understand my take on this. Um, short term rentals, um, the purpose um, is to allow this to happen in residential neighborhoods and the limitation to eight people is to recognize that you're in a residential neighborhood. If you need to entertain large guests, that's when parties um, need to consider going to hotels, which are in zones that sometimes are not residential and they're not disturbing other people. I, I don't see that you have a practical hardship here because short-term rentals in and of themselves were, be, were to be limited to smaller groups and in residential neighborhoods. I am one board member, but I just wanted to state to you how I hear the evidence today. All of the parties aside, I think some of those are a problem, but I think there's a fundamental issue here. And I think asking for a variance double of what this allows is way outside of what the ordinance ever was meant to cover. So I'm just one board member. Any other board members have any other comments or questions before I entertain a motion? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Madam Chair, uh, in, in case number, uh, what are we on? Um, num we're on case number um, um, three, I'm sorry, uh, docket number three, case number 21. Right. Madam Chair, in case number 21, for the reasons the chair pointed out, which I totally agree with, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, I move that uh, the applicant's request be denied. I have a motion from Mr. Banuki. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Stiller. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Is any opposed? Chair votes with this motion. The request has been denied. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to take just a, a brief rest break um, and we'll be back in about two minutes, okay? Yeah. Thank you.
Okay, is everyone back? Oh, Mr. Stiller's not back yet. And the court reporter's not back. Hey, Chairman Otto, I'm, I'm gonna recuse on the next case, so Randy's in charge on my side. Okay, thank you for letting Just us on know that. that. One case. I need to on, on docket number five? Yeah, I think okay. whatever the next case is. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna go dark, we'll call you, we'll call you back up. I'll unmute, when I see the case is over, I'll come back on. Okay, all right. Just making sure everybody's back. Hang on, I'm one second. Oh, no, you're, you're fine. I'm just uh, yeah. While you're getting ready, do we have all the um, city staff back on? I can't see if you're here or not. Joe's here. Okay. This is Zach. I'm back. Shu, are you there? Oh, here's Shu. Patty, are you Shoot. back? I'm here. Okay. And I'm sorry, Joe, you were going to say something? Yeah, Chris has the next case anyway. Oh, Chris does. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. okay. That's what I was going to say. Sorry. I'm trying to look at too many things here. So let me get Does back. someone have um, the list of the ones that have been um, continued or whatever? I wasn't able to. Yes, I can tell you. I can tell you what we have left, if that okay. would be helpful. Yeah. We have cases, dockets number five. You see where it says the case number on the side. So we have to do five, eight. 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, and 22. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is it going yep. okay, Maria? Are we going slow enough? Some people are going faster, but I it's going okay. Um, so it, do you guys just do this until you're done, I guess, so we won't know? We, we do. Yes, we do. Some of them won't be this long. This last one was an unusually long one. Sorry. Gotcha. That's okay. All right. Is everybody ready? Let's go back on the record. 
Let's call docket number five, case number 11, with an address of 6733 Prospect Avenue. Is the applicant online? Nicholas Stewart. I'm gonna go ahead and promote him. Mr. Stewart, I can see you. Could I can? You're muted. Could you unmute yourself, please? Oh, please. Yes. Okay. How you doing today? I'm. I am well. How are you? All right. Can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, I'm Nicholas Stewart. Okay. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Yes. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else present interested in this case um, for a special use permit? Hearing no Sorry. other present, is that correct? Oh. Uh, Dana Blay has raised his hand, but I'm pretty sure he's here for something else. Else, or uh, is he the? Is he on this one, Chris? Joe, this is Chris. Uh, Dana is the architect on the project. Okay, I'm promoting them, but I don't see anyone else, Madam Chair. Okay. Let's raise their hand. Well, let's make sure Mr. Blay is here. Mr. Blay, I can see your box. I can't see you or hear you. Can you unmute yourself, Mr. Blay? I'm here now. I can hear you, yes. Okay. Mr. Blay, um, I'm going to swear you in. Would you raise your right hand? Yes. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Blay, have you had a chance to review the staff report connected with this application for a special use permit? Yes. Okay. If you would look on the final page of that report, right above Mr. Huey's signature, there's a list of administrative exhibits that number one through nine. Do you have any objection to my admitting those for the board to consider this afternoon? Nope. Okay, exhibits one through nine will be admitted. Um, and we have a presentation um, Mr. Huey, why don't you go ahead? All right. Can everyone see my screen okay? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Christopher Huey, staff planner for city planning development. Uh, before us, we have a special use permit application for 6731 and 6733 Prospect Avenue for the use of a U-Haul rental and repair service uh, business. Property zone currently M1-5. Um, as stated, this will be for vehicle rentals, uh, which are classified as uh, under the city code, vehicle sales and service, the subcategory of light equipment sales and rental outdoor. Um, that is the particular use in question, which is necessitating the SUP requirements. Um, as stated, this is located in Pro on Prospect Avenue, uh, kind of in the central core of the city. It fronts on the Prospect Avenue here on the west and then it backs up onto um, I-49, I-71 to the east. Here's a street view from Prospect Avenue, approximately kind of a rough approximation of the site width, just to give you a, a sense of the existing site. Um, the kind of key topics for this particular case is the applicant, Mr. Stewart, is proposing a 1,400 square foot vehicle bay and uh, building with a small office facility. Uh, the intent of this facility is to offer repair services uh, which are permitted uh, in this particular zoning district so long as they are not located within the uh, within 150 feet of the parkway and boulevard standards, which they are not. Uh, so they are in compliant with that re uh, requirement and then the repair services could move forward as is with uh, just a simple building permit. It's the vehicle sales and service, or excuse me, the vehicle sales and rental, uh, which requires a special use, per, use permit uh, approval. Uh, of course, is the site plan. As you can see, is the it's a fairly narrow site. Uh, there's a drive entrance off of Prospect Avenue, um, which goes into some vehicle parking along the rear of the site, and then the building with the three bays and then small office structure 
uh, located in the northern half approximately of the site. Uh, this is the proposed building elevations, the north elevation, west, east, which would uh, face 71 Highway, and then the south elevation with the three vehicle, vehicle bay doors. Um, one condition of the City Planning Commission was uh, for the applicant to revise the building elevations on the west elevation uh, to incorporate more windows and some sort of, uh, you know, uh, facade breaks. So on the left is the elevation that was presented to the City Planning Commission. On the right is the one that's been resubmitted and before you today for, for VZA consideration with additional windows. Um, so as stated, there's two particular land use um, applications with this particular case. Uh, one is for vehicle sales and service, uh, or excuse me, more vehicle repair, uh, which is permitted by right in the zoning district. Uh, the other is for the light equipment sales and rental, which requires a special use permit in the zoning district. Um, one th important characteristic to point out, the school park area plan uh, in this particular area does recommend a land use of office along the prospect corridor. Um, however, motor vehicle repair li is limited, or excuse me, limited motor vehicle repair is permitted by right in the zoning district. So therefore staff does support the particular use. Um, with special use permits, uh, from time to time, we do recommend um, condition or have a time limitations on these particular applications with new construction like this and it's a untested use uh, for this particular site we are looking for a five-year approval um, that at the end of that five years the applicant would have to come back through the review process and kind of assess how the operations have gone and if there's anything uh, any other aspects that are, have become out of, out of compliance. Um, additionally to the special use permit request, there's a uh, variance assumed within the special use permit. Um, outdoor re retail sales, this, that's a bad code citation there, uh, outdoor retail sales of motor vehicles um, is required to have a 20 foot setback from any property line or right of way. Uh, given the narrow nature of the site, the uh, 20 foot setback couldn't really be maintained based on the rear parking lot. It's approximately 13 feet from the north property line, 14 feet from the, uh, it'd be the east property line, I apologize for that, and then 10 feet from the south property line. Uh, so in summary, staff does recommend support of the special use permit application for a period of five years. The city planning commission did recommend approval with conditions as well at their June 2nd public hearing day. And with that, I will conclude my presentation, stand for any questions or turn it over to the applicant. Okay, thank you, Mr. Huey. Um, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Blay, um, why do you believe we should grant this uh, permit and um, what is your position on the uh, limitation of five years on this, um, this permit? Well, the limitation, I guess I have to come back uh, in front of you guys to, to, to I'm, I'm going to try to keep the business operational. I want to start it and keep it going. You know, I don't want to, you know, I want a lifetime deal of this on the property. You know, I mean, I just don't want the property to sit up there vacant and, you know, I just keep cutting the trees and stuff and trying to keep it presentable. You know, those are old pictures up there that before I purchased the property, now it's cleaned all up and everything. And I'm just, waiting to move forward with this. Okay, and so Mr. Stewart, I appreciate your comments. Um, but what the city staff is concerned about is whether this is going to be a good fit in the neighborhood. And so the five I've years- been, I've, I've, done, yeah. I've done public engagement. I've been with the attorney in the neighborhood association. Okay. I go by the neighborhood association's house. You know what I mean? They have meetings, you know? I've been intact with them since day one. And even if this board would only grant this for five years, that does not mean that if you come back in five years and prove that you have done a good job and run the business accordingly, that you wouldn't get a longer a longer uh, permit to continue to stay in operation there. So okay. this is just, when the city staff makes this recommendation to us, it's a way to make sure this is going to fit and okay. you're going to be an appropriate um, steward of this business okay? okay 
So yes. it, it's not it's not a slight in any way. It's really just us making sure um, okay. and, and protecting your neighbors. It's really a protective you know nature. It's not punitive as to you. Okay. Yeah, and I've been in tune with the neighbors too. You know that they, they appreciate what I've done. You know, like next door before I came, they can see their place now. You know what I mean? I do. I do. And and this board is very appreciative of good neighbors. <laughs> so yeah. it's something that. Um, we have um, uh, stressed uh, for as long as I've been on this board, which is a long time. So, so you understand that. Um, is there anything else you want us to hear about what you're proposing here? No, right now, that's, the, that's it at this moment. Okay. Mr. Blay, is there anything you need to add? I'd just like to say, you know, the front of the building is an office and a bathroom. So we put in as much windows as we could and you really can't put any windows in the repair bay, so um, because of the uh, nature of the business, you don't want a security problem. So it's we we do have a little office, <laughs> like they want in the uh, plan, and uh, it's I think it's a good activity for the neighborhood. Uh, Nick's a really good steward of property, and he's going to maintain it pretty well. Um, so I, I think it's a good fit. Board members have questions for Mr. Stewart or Mr. Blay. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Stiller, I can't hear you. A couple of questions of, of Mr. Stewart. Uh, just kind of a quick uh, rundown of the hours uh, that you would keep, the number of vehicles, and some little basic description of how you, you operate, if you would. Okay, well, I'm going to try to open a business from maybe 10 to 5, you know what I mean? And we're going to keep maybe five vehicles, three to five vehicles on there at a time. And I'm going to be trying to do inspections on vehicles also. Oh, what about weekends? Weekends, Saturday, maybe from 10 to 2. So it's not going to be as long on Saturdays as Monday through Friday. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions from board members? Hearing no other questions, I would entertain a motion. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Stiller. In case number five? Yeah, uh, no, case, I'm sorry, docket number five, case number 11. Docket number five, case number 11, uh, I would move that the board grant uh, the uh, special use permit as delineated in the staff report and site plan. And are you limiting that for a five-year period? For the five-year period, yes. Okay, do I have a second to that motion? Second. I have a second from Ms. Mixdorf. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The, the request is granted as stated. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Mr. Blay, good luck with your business. Thank you. Have a blessed day, everybody. Sure. All right, let's move to the next case which would be docket number eight, um, case number 20. The address would be 3201 Southwest Traffic Way. Would the applicant please uh, raise your hand to be promoted? Madam Chair, I see Kurt Mitchell. I'm gonna go ahead and promote him. Okay. Case item eight. Um, Joe, there are two other people on the phone here um, with this case that our applicant and architect. Could you please project or promote Grant Tomey and Jeffrey Ullman? Yes. I need spellings, please. I'll, I'll give them to you. Tome is T H O M E. Alman is U L L M A N. And and Mr. Mitchler, can you spell your name for the court reporter as well? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's M I T S C H E R. All right, I see Mr. Mitchell, I see Mr. Ullman promoted. I still do not see, oh yes, I see Mr. Tomey. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Now you're, you're appearing for me. 
All right, gentlemen, yeah. let me, um, is there anyone else online interested in this case? Another special use permit. I see. Uh, Madam Chair, someone named Stacy Kenyon just raised their hand. Okay, why don't you promote that person and we'll see what their interest is before we um, get started. Okay. Okay. Okay, I see Mr. Ullman now. <laughs> I'm waiting to see Miss Kenyon or Mr. Kenyon. I'm not sure if that's. It's telling me that it's promoting um, Stacy Kenyon, but yet the name still appears on my attendee list, which is unusual. So I'm not sure if I'm going to just click allow to talk. And so, um, Stacy, I've unmuted you. You should be able to speak. Can you tell us what you're interested in? Huh. Okay, well, I don't know what to do about that, so. This is Zach Nelson. Um, I believe Stacy is representing the Coleman, <clears throat> excuse me, Coleman Highlands neighborhood. Um, okay. And I, be I believe um, there was some concern about the public engagement, so I believe that might be Why what she, she Okay. Yeah. Stacy, it's, I'm trying to promote you to panelist. Oh, I there she is. Don't, she is. No, she's, come on, just give her Okay. A yeah. Okay. Stacy, can you hear me? This is Teresa Otto. You're now, Stacy, I see you, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Stacy, I still can't hear you. Can you can you speak? Yeah, I can't hear her. Okay, Stacy, I think she probably can hear us. Let's try this. Um, Can, oh, well, it's like she's trying to call in based on yeah, that's what I was going to say give her let's give her a second because I don't think her audio is working on her on her video sorry gentlemen this is not the perfect it's not, it's not always the perfect platform it's the best we have in these times so I apologize very understandable <laughs> But I want to give the neighborhood their opportunity. Okay, I think she's now called in. And that's is, is it looks like a nine one three number just called in. Joe, you want to see if that's her? Stacy, is the yeah. Uh, I'm Kenyon. stepping away from my computer. Yes, okay. I apologize. That's okay. This happens. We understand. Okay, so let let's get started, Miss Ken. You can hear us, and then we'll give you a chance as soon as I get through the the claim the applicant side of the case. Okay. Certainly. Okay. Um, all right, gentlemen. Let's start with you. Uh, I need to swear you in, uh, Mr. Mitchner. Do you want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Tomey, would you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Ullman, would you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Gentlemen, have you reviewed the staff report that is connected to this request for a special use permit? We have. Do you have any? We have. Okay. Um, and if one of you could be the spokesperson, that would help us with the court reporter. And then I don't know who, who, who that is, but it'll make it easier for the court reporter. We won't talk over each other that way. Um, 
Is there any objection to this my- This is Kurt Mitch been asked to be the front. Okay, and Mr. Mitchell, your video feed is cutting out. So um, I don't know if it's your video speed, your internet speed, but you're kind of cutting in and out. Yeah, I keep getting a message that my internet may not be as stable as I would like. Okay, okay, we'll try to deal with that. All right, any objection to the admission of the 12 administrative exhibits that are outlined in the staff report and listed on page eight of the staff report? No objections. Okay, exhibits one through 12 will be admitted. Uh, Mr. Nelson, would you please present that the case based on those exhibits? Yes, let me share my screen just a moment. Can everybody see my screen? I believe so. Okay. Good afternoon, Zach Nelson, city planning staff. This next case is a request for a special use permit. Uh, this case is located within the Midtown area. A little more specifically, this is the Metropolitan Community College Penn Valley campus. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this site. Um, it's just east of Summit Street. Um, and just south of 31st Street um, and then north of 33rd Street here. So the campus encompasses basically two city blocks and then they have some additional buildings to the east as well. Um, there's single family residential to the west across Summit Street, um, some multifamily apartments to the north. And then the block immediately to the south is mostly undeveloped at this point. So this is looking at the site looking north from 33rd Street. And the applicant is here today requesting a special use permit to allow for a building addition on the south portion of building two shown here. Um, the majority of this campus is zoned R1.5 and the zoning code considers um, the community college to be a public and civic use. And in the R1.5 zoning districts public and civic uses require a special use permit. So that's why this is here before you today. So this addition is, um, that's proposed is just under 7,000 square feet um, with a connection to the parking lot on the east here, as you can see with sidewalks surrounding the building to the south and east. And then this is a building elevation um, showing the south elevation and the building materials will be primarily fiber cement panels with dark bronze metal paneling, and it will have some sun shades as well. And this is intended to allow for additional um, learning space for the engineering technology department. Um, so staff is supportive of this and recommends approval subject to five conditions in the staff report. Um, one of the conditions, condition one, is that the special use permit be limited to public and civic uses. And we have not provided a time limit for that uh, special use permit at this point. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Um, uh, Mr. Mitchler, um, what else would you like the board to understand about this? And please uh, let the board know if you're in agreement with the five conditions that have already been outlined by staff. Yes, we would like to discuss um, a little further the condition um, that requests that we provide a new water main in Pennsylvania Avenue from 32nd to 33rd Streets. Um, we're we're adding about 7,000 square feet of building space to an existing campus that currently has about 560,000 square feet of uh, building space located on the, the west, call it the west block between Pennsylvania and Southwest Traffic Way. Um, we are not adding any additional water use except for a couple of sinks and one hose bib. So we're not requiring any additional service. 
Um, there's an existing fire hydrant on the site, according to city mapping, uh, about 170 feet from the uh, southwest corner of our proposed building expansion. So we have hydrant coverage and water pressures that currently meet the needs of the city or of the uh, campus itself. Um, what, what our request would be would be to defer this requirement until a larger development is proposed by the uh, university. Um, we uh, discussed this a little bit with uh, city staff and they, uh, city staff at Water Services Department, they indicated that they would still prefer to close the loop. But at this time, that uh, water service improvement does not provide additional um, capacity to the college. And as such, we would like to defer that improvement until such time as a larger development is proposed. And is, tell us again, where this water main, where is it located, the extension? The extension that they would like is in Pennsylvania Avenue from 32nd Street, which is about the midpoint on the campus, um, to 33rd Street. I don't have um, the water mapped, but so I'm not sure. Yeah, and Mr. Nelson, what's what? Why is staff recommending this at this time? Just so that the board can understand that better. Yeah. So water services, mm -hmm. they stated that the existing water mains are not connected along Pennsylvania from 32nd to 33rd, and they're not looped per their KC water requirements. Um, however, I've spoken with um, staff internally. And I don't think we would have objection if we deferred this to a later time. It sounds like from the water usage that they're proposing and how large the campus is, it doesn't seem to be um, a condition that um, is entirely appropriate at this time. I'll let Joe speak further if he'd like, but. Mr. Yeah, Madam. Yeah, this is Joe Rexmichael. We uh, attempted to contact our reviewers and water services as this was their condition and um, to understand, you know, why they think it's necessary to undertake this type of public improvement with such a small um, addition to the campus. Um, and their response was essentially that's what the current standards say. Um, I think really the dis decision before the board today is whether the current standards should be applied um, in this type of situation. And in my opinion, in Zach's opinion, um, what the effect of this condition is, is would require them to make an improvement that's out of proportion with what's proposed by the developer or by the applicant. Okay. Um, board members, Mr. Have questions about this, ver this variation on the number of uh, on the conditions? It's only condition number two that we're talking about, right? I I assume that's the one it is. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, yeah, number two. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question for Sarah. I mean, is there any doubt that this? Uh, if we do allow the waiver of this condition uh, here today, it will bind us in any way in the future or excuse the standard in the future? Well, I don't, I think, I think if what staff is saying is that the requirement is not um, justified with such a um, smaller addition, 
then no, I, I don't think that it would. I mean, I, because I do think it needs to be, I do think in all situations, it would need to be proportional to the improvement that's being made. And it sounds like they're in agreement that, it, that it's not based on what I'm hearing. So uh, Mr. Kelleher, my question, I guess, would be to follow up on that. If the applicant would agree, and it sounds like they do, could we place some sort of condition that there is an agreement that further expansion of a greater size, you know, onto the campus that it they would comply with this? I mean, can we do that, Sarah? Is that allowed? Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't know that we know what size that would Just be. So I think that, that it's Sorry, fine. Sarah. Yeah, I think it's fine to make that general statement. And so that the board knows anytime they're, they plan to expand the building footprint, impervious surface area, um, there's a couple other, and building height uh, by more than 10%, it would come back before you guys for approval. Okay. That's so okay. that's kind of baked in already um, that if they exceed it by 10%, it would come back to you. Okay. Thank you. That's Mr. Rex Winkle speaking. Thank you. Yes, sorry. Thank you, Joe. All right. Does that answer the board's question on this issue? Yeah. So it seems to me that it would we would just excise uh, condition number two, and that would be fine. And so that, I'm one board member, I guess, but that's what I'm hearing, right? I I believe you're understanding what how staff is explaining how this could be handled if the board is so inclined. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion on this request. Madam can, Chair? The, can you guys take the picture down so I can see everybody again? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry. Joe, can you take that down? Or Zach, thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion on this, on this, on this uh, case, which is case number um, 20? Madam Chair, did we actually ask for testimony from Ms. Kenyon? Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not. Um, yes, Ms. Kenyon, I apologize. My, my apologies. Um, do you wish to speak? Yes, and thank you. That makes okay. me giggle. It's just consistent with all this fun technology stuff I, we're doing. I, I know. I'm sorry. And, and Ms. Kenyon, let me swear you in. I can't see you, yeah. but do, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you I am. Do you swallow, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> um, I live at 3420 West Coleman Road. I'm the president of Coleman Highlands Neighborhood Association. And I really don't have any pluses or minuses to add to this, but I did want to submit comment that um, the Neighborhood Association was never advised of any of the SUP permit application process. So I actually only found out about it this morning because of the BZA agenda. I was tuning in for something else. So I have not talked to any of my neighbors to find out their, um, their input on it. I do not have a slant, positive or negative, but I do just want to, you know, make sure that it's documented that uh, Coleman Highlands Neighborhood Association was not included on the notification list, although 42 residents, it looks like, were on the mailing labels list. Okay, Ms. Kenyon, I think that's noted. Um, I don't know uh, if your association should have been notified. I can't speak to that. Um, but based on what you've heard here today, you don't have a, a position one way or the other. Correct, yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? Then I would entertain a motion. So we are talking about condition number four, correct? No, number two. Two, two, okay. Uh, then in that case, in case number 20, I would move the approval of the application subject to all conditions in the staff report except for number two, uh, which would only not apply in this instance, but um, apply to any future expansions. I have a motion from Mr. Kelleher. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Ebbets. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The request is granted as stated. Thank you, gentlemen, and Ms. Kenyon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We will move on to docket number 10, case number 52, with an address of 5617 Northeast 51st Street. Is the applicant online? If so, please raise your hand to be promoted. I see uh, Robert Scarborough has raised his hand and I'm, I will promote him. <sighs> Mr. Scarborough, I can see you. Can you speak so I can hear you? Good afternoon. Okay. All right. Would you please rate, would you please state your name for the record? Rob. Robert Scarborough. And Mr. Scarborough, would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Is there anyone else online who's interested in this case? Madam Chair, no one's raised their hand. Thank you. All right, Mr. Scar Scarborough, have you had a chance to review the staff report that's been created as it relates to your application? I have. Okay. On. on I'm sorry, Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Kenyon, are you are you interested in this case? Ms. Kenyon? Okay, I think she was still online. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. All right. Um, sorry, sir, did you have any objection to my admitting the administrative exhibits that are outlined and listed on page 10 of the staff report um, that number one through nine? I do not. Okay, those exhibits will be admitted. And um, Ms. Noel, are you the presenter on this case? Yes, I am. Okay, would you go ahead and proceed and then we'll have questions for the applicant. Yes, and the past few minutes here, I'm having difficulty with either the PowerPoint or Zoom, one or the other, I'm not sure, but I cannot share this screen with you. But I can explain this um, fairly easily. And if I could request that we combine cases 10 and 11. Okay. Involve the same structure. They're simply uh, duplex units within the same structure, same request, everything is identical. Okay, let, let, uh, Ms. Noel, let me call that second case then. So we have this all in one. I'm also going to call docket number 11, case number eight. Um, the address on that unit is 5619 Northeast 51st Street. And again, Mr. Scarborough, you're here on that case and under oath, correct? Correct. Okay. And in that case, there's also a uh, staff report. Correct. And in that same case, there's also the same exhibits, correct, Ms. Noel? That is correct. Okay. And those have been previously admitted. Okay. So please proceed and um, we'll then go from there. Okay, the, the property consists of a structure located at 5617, 5619 Northeast 51st Street, which is slightly east of Interstate 35, south of what would be Vivian Road. The property is a uh, long linear property. I know you can't see this aerial photo because I can't, I'm still trying to share it and it won't share. That's all right, Steph. Steph, I mean, the board has a staff report that has these aerial photos in it. So yes. we're seeing it with you, Ms. Okay, Wayne. good. Yeah, we have okay. it. Um, there is a uh, parking behind the building. The driveway access to the property is shared with the property to the west. The zoning is R-5, which does permit uh, duplex residential. There is sufficient lot area. The applicant held a public engagement uh, meeting via Zoom on May 28th. <laughs> 7 p.m. There was one person in attendance and I spoke to that person personally. I've had uh, a couple of the phone calls from property owners in the area who um, had no issues were supported. So the applicant requests special use permit to allow short-term rental within both sides of the duplex structure within separate units. The um, property complies with all standards of the development code. Staff sees no significant adverse impact on the welfare of the neighborhood. 
It is compatible with the surrounding area. There are other duplex structures on the block across the street. Also compatible in terms of operating characteristics, hours, lighting, and staff does not believe it will negatively affect pedestrian safety. The applicant could not obtain 55% consent, which would have allowed him to receive administrative approval because there are several absentee property owners on the block. So that is the reason for requesting the special use permit. And that concludes my report. Okay. Staff does recommend approval, subject to a condition that there be a two year approval. Okay. Mr. Scarborough, are you uh, in any way opposing the two year limitation on this recommendation? Like the previous applicant, I'd love a lifetime, uh, but I, I understand the, the reason for a two year. Yes, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, does the board understand this request? Have questions? Chairman Otto, are we yeah. just one case at a time, aren't we? Yeah, if we're gonna, yeah, if you don't have a question and everyone understands, then I would probably want separate motions just so there's it's clean because they're different addresses. Okay. I have a question. Is, is it case number 52? It's case, eight, it's, ten? it's case number 52 and case number eight. No case 10. No, that's do, it's docket 10 and docket 11. Sorry, those are different. Yeah. I, yeah. I, call them, I call them so the court reporters can see where we are. It's easier for her if I do that. Understood. Okay, I'm good. Okay, any questions? If not, I would entertain a motion on, let's do case number 52. Madam Chair, I have a motion, Mark Evitz. In yes. case number 52, I recommend the applicant be granted his request in accordance with site plan and staff report. And in, and including a two-year limitation? No, on I'm the, sorry, yes, including a two-year limitation on this variance. Okay. I have a motion for Mr. Evitz. Do I have a second? Second. Second. I have a second for Mr. Stiller. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This um, matter has been um, granted as stated. Then I would entertain a motion on case number eight. To continue that, in, uh, Mark Evitz, in case number eight, I recommend the applicant be granted his request with a two-year limitation in accordance with site plan and staff report. I have a motion from Mr. Evitz. Do I have a second? Okay. I have a second from Mr. Stiller. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The matter has been granted as stated. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, are the next, are 13 and 14 going to be called together? Those have been continued, haven't they? No, they haven't. No, 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 no has been. Ms. Jensen's on these, are these together? Or are they separate? Yes, we. Yes, they're together. They're together, Shu. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I like when we call them together, it makes us go a little faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's call dockets 13 and 14. Those are case numbers 44 and 45. The addresses are respectively 3500 Jefferson Street and 3504 Jefferson Street. Um, is Ms. Jensen here and can you promote her please? <clears throat> I've just promoted Ms. Jensen. Yeah, she should be able to talk. Ms. Jensen, you're muted. I mute, Patricia. There, I did. There she goes. Okay. And before we hear from I Ms. Jensen. I have to remember after all this time. <laughs> you guys have had a docket. Well, it's it's normal time for us these days. Um, is there? Let me ask this question before I hear from Ms. Jensen. Is there anyone um, still online interested in either one of these cases? Please raise your hand to be promoted, if so. I do not see anyone, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rexman. Um, Ms. Jensen, would you state your name, please? Patricia Jensen with Ross Fritz here uh, on behalf of the applicant. Okay, and let me swear you in again. Do you solemnly okay. swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. And I, I do not have any objection to the exhibits that are in your staff report. Okay, I'm gonna, let me just make sure I have the right number. Are they the same exhibits with both cases, Chu? I believe so. Okay, so uh, I will admit exhibits 
one through eight in both cases. Okay. Um, Shu, do you want to start? And then we'll hear from Ms. Jensen. Yep. Okay. Excuse me. Who would with I'm city sorry. planning? One yeah. second. One, one second, Shu. Yes, Mr. Evans. In the next case, we have two number seven. So it'd be one to nine in the second case. And then oh, okay. Did I say, okay, hold on a second. You're right. Let me just clarify it. Let me look in the first case. There's well, two number sevens in the first case. So it'd be exhibits one to nine, Chairman Otto. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm going to correct that in the record. Exhibits one through nine will be admitted. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Shu. All right. Shu Wood, City Planning. I'm going to share my screen here in a second. These two cases in front of you are two variance applications um, for two properties abutting each other. One is 3500, one is 3504 Jefferson Street. Here's the general location of these two properties. More specifically, they're located at the southwest corner of West 35th Street and Jefferson Street. Currently, the property is on R2.5, and here's a street view looking south from Jefferson Street. The subject sites with those two colonnade architect um, buildings are located on your right-hand side. Here's another view looking south from west of 35th Street. The subject site with the buildings is located on your left-hand side. The property owner owns this entire block, including this undeveloped land. Here's a site that they um, propose to go through a lot line of adjustment to give lot line to give lot two and lot three enough lot area for the number of units each of them do contain. So the minor subdivision for the lot line of adjustment currently is under review by city staff and it has been through the zoning approval. The variance review is based off the approval of this minor subdivision. So the lot area is not considered as requested for variance later on. These are some building elevations for these two buildings. The one on top is, a west, is the west exterior elevation that you're looking at, which is the rear side of the property. They do have staircases in the middle of the building. And the south in the picture, the elevation underneath is the north exterior elevation which is um, the west side elevation. The property owner proposes to expand this property slightly by enclosed the staircases. Therefore, it triggers the request for variances. The first variance, which is for uh, case number 44, uh, it also is located at 3500 Jefferson Street. Uh, the first variance that's requested is for front yard setback. Currently, the Code requires a minimum of 16 feet front yard setback, and the applicant is proposing to remain the existing front yard setback, which is 14.9 feet. A variance amount of 1.1 feet is requested. The second variance is for the street side yard setback. The code requires 15 feet side yard setback from west of 35th Street. The applicant proposed to remain the existing side yard setback of 9.8 feet, so a variance amount of 5.2 feet is requested. And that's for the first building, which is the North building. And the second uh, set of variances is for the South building, which is case number 45. There are also two variants requested. The first one is still front yard setback. The same minimum amount is required here for 16 feet and the applicant is proposing 14.7 feet as their existing front yard setback. So a variance amount of 1.3 is requested. The second variance is for the site yard setback. A minimum of 6.4 feet is requested here. And the applicant proposes to remain the building at its current location with a zero foot setback of the site yard. So a variance amount of 6.4 feet is requested. And I do have a applicant PowerPoint after mine. I have completed my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Shu. Ms. Jensen? 
Madam Chair, um, I'm going to try to save your time and not go through the PowerPoint because many of the slides are kind of the same as what Shu has shown you. Um, essentially, this, and I would like you to ex to admit this as Exhibit 10 um, for Exhibit, both cases. Exhibit 10 will be admitted in both matters. And what this will show you is there is a timeline contained in this PowerPoint that talks about the date of construction of these buildings. These were originally constructed in about 1920 before the city had a um, zoning ordinance. I think the city's first zoning ordinance was adopted in 1923. Um, in last year, last November, our my client acquired these properties to rehab them. These buildings are pretty blighted buildings. They are located right north of the Norman School building. I think many of you who travel Southwest Traffic Way recognize that Norman School has been rehabbed and has been put to use as apartments and is a very attractive building and attractive use now. Um, Last December, our client acquired demolition permits to start the interior demolition of the site. Um, and then we have since obtained, we issued a request in June for a conditional building permit so we could keep moving forward on what needs to be done with the site pending the receipt of these variances. We're not making any changes to the side or front yard. It's just the fact that the existing side and front yards don't um, comply with the current zoning and development code. But what we're doing is certainly going to help um, continue the revitalization in this area. Our client has met with Valentine Neighborhood Association and they were very pleased with his work, so we would request that you approve the requested variances in both of these cases. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. And just to be sure, is there anyone online, again, interested in this case or these cases? Okay. Does the board have questions for Shu or Ms. Jensen? If not, does anyone have a meeting? Yes, Mr. Ebbets, you're muted anymore. So Patricia or Ms. Jensen, tell me about parking. Well, what, what Shu has said is at the same time, we're doing a minor subdivision plot where we are actually adding property to these existing parcels. And behind there is where we're going to construct the parking for these existing units. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? If no questions, I would entertain a motion. Yeah, I would like individual motion. So if I could first have a motion in docket 13 or case number 44, please. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Stiller. In case number 44 or docket number 13, yes. I move that the board grant uh, the variances as requested uh, and uh, delineated in the staff report and site plan. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The request is granted as stated. And then can I have a motion on um, docket number 14, case number 45, please? Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Stiller. Yes, in docket 14, case number 45, I move the, that the board grant uh, the request as delineated in the Staff report and site plan. I have a motion from Mr. Stiller. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This request is also granted. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. All right, let's move on to docket 15, case number 95, uh, with an address of 9615 Grandview Road. Would the applicant please raise your hand to be promoted? Uh, staff recommend to continue this case to October. October 13? Correct, October 13. Is there anyone online about here of interest in this case? Uh, I don't see anyone. 
I'm sorry. sorry. Ms. Mixdorf, did you have a comment? Oh, I thought we were on 15. This one said docket 18. So I was just verifying. Yeah, I think, yeah, no, we're on docket 15. This is not on this matter. I don't, I didn't do, okay. So um, board members, do I have a motion to continue case number 95, please? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Benucci. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. This matter, docket 95, I mean, I'm sorry, case number 95 will be uh, continued to October 13th of 2020. All right. Then let's move down to docket 18, case number 33 with an address of 7070 Nolan Road. Is the applicant present? And if so, please raise your hand to be promoted. I see Ms. Sean Houston gonna promote. I also see someone named Matthew Davis and then someone who's using a device, I'm assuming this is their device name of RCT. Promote. I'll just promote all of them okay. for now. Yep, and we'll figure this out. Okay. All right, is Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, can you unmute yourself? There, you, I see you. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so you have two devices going there somehow, so. Um, all right, Let, let's, we'll try to figure this out. Uh, all right, um, is it Mr. or Ms. Houston? Ms. Sean Houston, can you hear me? I'm sorry, can you try? Can you Ms. Try Houston, me? you should be able to talk now. Can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Houston, I can hear you now, thank you. Thanks. And who is the individual who has a designation RCT6213W87DK? <laughs> Randy Wood. I'm sorry? Randy Wood with Timbercraft Farms. Uh, okay, you guys are all echoing. Are you guys on with two different devices at a time? Yes. Okay, that helped, whatever you did. And just make sure you're talking, on the one you wanna to talk to us on, make sure the other one is muted because if it's two microphones, we're having gonna have an issue and it's really hard on the court reporter. This is hard enough on her without that, okay? Thank you. All right, I need to, I need to swear, and Mr. Davis, are you the applicant? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, are you guys all in the same room? Yes. Okay, is there a way you all can be on one device? So you can- Sorry, people on. Yeah, could you share the screen? Can we just, yeah, because if we can drop one of you off, if that, that will make it a lot easier, then we won't have the echo. Perfect, yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind COVID. <laughs> I, I know, I'm sorry. I it just, there's no, it, it'll be horrible. We can't even hear you. So. Okay, hi guys. <laughs> sorry to break all the rules today. <laughs> Oh, and I'm, a, I'm and I'm doing a public servant job today. So I'm not sure that's probably appropriate. So please try to be as careful as possible, okay? And we'll do yes. it as quickly as possible. All right. So okay. I'm we'll gonna, read shallow. Yeah, and I want to I want to swear you in. But for the court reporter, I want each of you to first state your name. So Mr. Davis, state your name. Matthew Davis. Miss Houston, state your name. Michonne Houston. Okay. And sir, I didn't get your name. Could you state your name? I couldn't hear you. Randy Wood. Randy Wood, okay. All three of you, please raise your right hands to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. All right. Have you all reviewed the staff report that's connected to this application? No, we were not provided with that. Okay, it's online. Um, my question before we can get started is, is there some administrative exhibits that are designated in that report that number it should be one through nine, I believe. I think we have another, I think, I think, I think we have sevens being repeated today. Um, and so what those are there, I think you might've heard if you've been on a while, it's a copy of our zoning and development code. It's our rules of the board. 
Do you have any in the staff report? Is there any objection to our admitting that for the board to consider this afternoon? No. Okay. Exhibits one through nine will be admitted. And Shu, um, you have this case, correct? You're muted, Shu. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> Okay. And that's correct. All right, Shu, can you go ahead and present and then we'll have questions for the applicants, all right? Sure. So this case in front of you is another variance application for 7070 Nolan Road. Here's the general location of the site. It's located to the east side of uh, Kansas City. More specifically, it is located on the west side of Nolan Road, south side of Ricky Road. Um, it is on R80. And it is a very country style site. Currently, there is no primary structure on the site, or uh, there won't be a one. There are a few accessory buildings located on the structure. It's heavily wooded uh, with a flat area, mostly located to the north of the site, the subject site. Um, it is on R80 all the way around. Here's the view looking west from Nolan Road at the subject site. And this is a view looking east from Nolan Road, right across the subject site. And this is a site plan proposed by the applicant. The applicant proposed to build a house on this site, which will sit 1,125.94 feet away from the um, west, from the east property line, which is their um, front theme to be their front yard. And currently, they do have an existing accessory building located south of this uh, proposed house uh, with, with a further front yard setback. So here's another site map showing, indicating all these other accessory buildings on this site. Here is the existing barn, which will sit closer to the front than the proposed house. And there is, go, there is another removable container for storage located to the north of the proposed house site. There is also a non-permanent horse shelter located to the um, right side of the house, to the east side of the house, and another storage container that's no longer existing to the, um, next to the horse shelter. So due to our code that the Primary building shall sit closer to the front um, property line than any accessory building. But this site is a little unique that it already has a, uh, it already has accessory buildings on the site without any primary buildings. So when staff review this proposal, the variance that need for this proposed primary house will be a front yard setback. So the minimum requirement for the front yard setback to keep this accessory building is one thousand. 106.48 feet. And then the applicant is proposing a front yard setback of 1,125.94 feet as shown on the site map. So a variance amount of 19.46 feet is requested here. Again, these are really large front yard setbacks. And the applicant did provide a presentation. Whenever you're ready, I completed my presentation. Okay, let's hear from the applicant about why you want to place it here. Okay, oh, I'm Michonne Houston, I'm the property owner. Um, we would like to place the house in this particular spot. First of all, secondary to the, the layout of the land and the, the house that we've chosen is an ele elevation earth contact, which would, will be built into the hill. Uh, the reason we specifically chose that, one of the reasons is because it will allow us to maintain more of our grass pasture land. I do breed horses, gypsy horses and drum horses. And the wooded areas are really not suitable for pasture and for grazing. Um, uh, also, we um, are thinking, you know, perhaps in the future, if there was ever a need for a lateral field for our septic system, that, that the only place we would have to do that would be in the pasture. So we would certainly not want a, a house there either. Um, um, the, to the north of us, north of where the house currently is now, there are two natural springs that come out of the hill. So it wouldn't be suitable to put it there because that's quite wet and that water then flows out onto the pasture. Um, so really the site that we've chosen is, is the most uh, amicable site for the, for the home to be located specifically for the type that we want and to preserve our pasture land. Here, Ms. Houston, I have a question. 
sure. uh, Teresa Otto. Um, just if I understand the overhead, is the pasture inside sort of what I would call sort of the gravel area we see that kind of circles non-permanent horse shelter? Is that is that the pasture? Yes, ma'am. That entire that flattish area, correct? Okay. And that's our driveway, that gravelly drive to get into the barn. That's what I assumed, but I just wanted to make sure when you say pasture, what you're talking about. Okay. Sure. All right. Um, what else would you like us to consider? Anything else? We have a couple more slides. They're just brief okay. slides with photos to show you points of view. Okay. Um, can we go to the next? This is just another uh, picture, aerial photo, showing our relationship to all of the neighbors around us. The only neighbor that really has a visual of a, of the home site or would have a visual of the home site is 7002 Nolan Road, and that would be Mike and Dana Vaughn, and I've spoken to them, and they're absolutely in, in agreement with uh, building a house there. They're happy to have us there and uh, have no problems with it. None of the other surrounding neighbors actually are able to see us at all, and the barn is not visible from the road. If you go to the next slide, I think you'll see that. This is our entrance. And the tree line to the left obscures the barn in the in the background. Next slide. This would be coming up the driveway. Still, you still cannot see the barn. It's again behind a tree line. Next. This is standing in the middle of the pasture, looking forward. Uh, I'm sorry, looking to the west. Next slide. Here, I've pardon my writing, but I've uh, kind of given you an idea of where the home would be with respect to the barn, which is currently to the um, south. Matt, if you can tell them how far the, the barn is to the south. The uh, the house will be placed uh, 163 feet to the north and 19.64 feet behind the front of the barn. So so there's there lies the request for the variance. And next slide. And that was Mr. Davis speaking, correct? Uh, oh, yes. Thank you. And that's it. We'd just like you to consider that for us. It would be the best use of our property for, for um, here going forward with my horse breeding business and our lives as well. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Houston. Thank you. Um, board members, questions for the applicant or for Ms. Wood? Hearing no questions, I, I would take that that people understand this request. And if that's the case, I would entertain a motion. Shu, if you would unshare your screen, please. I would entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Stiller. Uh, in docket 18, case 33, I would move uh, that the board grant the requested variances in accordance with the site plan and staff report. I have a motion from Mr. Stiller. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion and your request is granted. I saw that, Ms. Thank you. Hughes. It's always <laughs> nice to get a little applause. So good Thank luck. you very much. Thank you for your time. Good luck, good luck with your new home. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Bye now. All right. Let's keep moving here so we can all get a home to dinner. How about that? <laughs> all right. Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what? I'm not. <laughs> All right. Although some people might question that this is more my home than my home someday. So that's a statement of my life these days. All right. Let's move on to docket number 19, case number 36, with an address of 11201 North Marsh Avenue. Um, is the applicant present online? If so, please raise your hand to be promoted. I have promoted the applicant, Cassie Payne. I see Ms. Payne. All right, Ms. Payne, can you state your name, please? Ms. Payne, can you hear me? I am not hearing you. Well, actually, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can read your lips. <laughs> Not even like Jake from State Farm. You can't even, you can't even. I read your lips before, but I'm not catching it now. So let's see. Um, let's see what we can do. Ms. Payne, is your volume turned up on your computer or smartphone? I don't think she can hear us. Oh, yeah, you're right. Ms. Payne, can you read my lips? Can you turn up the volume on your computer? 
I am not hearing anything, but just a bunch of little ticking. Um, can we chat? Can we chat with her, um, Joe? Can you yeah, I just chat? I just sent her a chat message um, asking her to check her computer volume. My volume is up. Okay. Hmm. That's odd that we can hear her so perfectly. You know, we this is the first time we've had technical issues. The first two meetings went like I should have I jinxed us, didn't I? <laughs> Court reports getting a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You have to have a little bit of humor with the world we're in right now, so Every chance I get. Uh, administrator, uh, can you hear us now, Ms. Payne? Yes, I can. Awesome. <laughs> I just unplugged it, so I don't know. <laughs> well, it's it. You know, sometimes that's how I do too. Turn it off, turn it back on. Right. That's sometimes the only technical advice I can give people. All right, Ms. Payne, can you state your name, please, for the record? I've lost you again. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. It must be a connected a connection then. Okay. Or can you hear me? No. Nope. Um, Should I just call in or? Yeah. Can you do that? But then mute your volume because it'll echo. And we'll watch for you to dial in. This is everybody's technology. That's the problem, you know. By the way, Sarah, you look like you're in a law library. Just think, thought I'd say that to you. I'm in a conference room in my office, yeah. <laughs> it's like Tony with the books behind him. Well, we know what Tony's is a, is a, is a rude. <laughs> Remember his are sorted by color. I know, right? Yeah, he's, he's way <laughs> I've read every single book. Yeah. Ask him anything you want. It's right there. Okay. You see Miss Payne lit up on the right. Is she there? It says connecting to audio. She might be able to do that just on her phone. Yeah. See her in the lower right hand panel or? Yeah, I see her. Yeah, she's still connecting. I'm unmuted again. Yeah, can you hear us now? I just keep getting little dick dick dick. What's going on on my phone? Let me try again. I see, I think I see her calling in. Yeah, you want to try to do that, yeah. Cassie, okay, I unmuted. So, okay. Cassie, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 
Okay, now now mute now mute your computer. Okay, okay. Per, per, that's perfect. I, you're not echoing. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Thank okay. you. Okay, all right, Cassie, can you state your your name, please? Cassie Payne. And would you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And if, for the court reporter, if you could keep your phone kind of close to you when you're speaking, it's easier for her. Okay. 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 Is there anyone else online presently that's here interested in this case, which is a variance request? Please raise your hand. I don't see anyone okay. raising their hand. Okay. Um, Ms. Payne, have you had a chance to review the staff report that was connected as it relates to your request for variance? Yes. Okay. Um, after Ms. Wood's signature on that report, there's a list of exhibits and it says it should be one through nine. Any objection to the admission of those nine exhibits? No. Okay. Exhibits one through nine will be admitted. I'm going to have Shu, uh, Ms. Wood, make a presentation on your case and then we'll have questions for you. Okay? Okay. All right. Go ahead, Shu. All right. This case in front of you is located at 11201 North Marsh Avenue. Here's the general location of the site. It's located in the nor very north of North Kansas City area. Not North Kansas City, north of Kansas City area. More specifically, it is located at the north east corner of North Marsh Avenue and Northeast 112th Street. It is a corner lot, has a front yard facing Marsh Avenue and a street side yard abutting 112th Street. Here's the view located east from North Marsh Avenue. The subject side is this house located in the middle of this picture. Here's another view looking north from the Northeast 112th Street. And the subject side is located on your left hand side. There is currently an open deck on the street side yard. The applicant proposed to renovate this deck. And here's the site map proposed by the applicant. There is already an existing deck on the site, as I stated. And then the applicant proposed a new deck that will encroach the building line of the street site yard. Here's some details of the house and the plans for the deck. The deck will be roughly around 20, 12 feet long and about 10 feet uh, wide. It will still be an open deck. Here are some pictures provided by the applicant for the existing deck. So the minimum street side yard setback for any open deck will be 15 feet. Uh, we do not allow encroachment for deck to the street side yard. And the applicant is proposing a seven foot setback for this new deck. A various amount of eight feet is requested. That shall conclude my presentation. Chairman, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, Ms. Payne, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, why do you need a, a, a larger deck? Uh, explain to the board why you're why you're wanting this larger deck. Um, it's actually not a larger deck. It's uh, actually just replacing the deck that we currently have. We've lived here 17 years, and this is the deck that was here when we moved here. And we're, it's just getting old and falling apart, and we just wanted to replace the actual deck. We're not making it bigger. We're not doing anything but updating the deck and making it so that it's the uh, wood that you don't have to keep replacing and we're actually make improving the steps the steps right now have a very bad slope they're like a one-to-one -one slope and so we're making it more user friendly so um we're not actually increasing the deck size just keeping what we currently have okay um have you have you talked about this uh, deck proposal with your neighbors and have they voiced any concerns about it yeah, I've talked to them and actually they've gotten letters because a few of them have stopped by and said, oh, we're looking forward to seeing the new deck and nobody has, you know, said anything negatively about it. Okay.
board members quest questions for the applicant? Okay, um, then I would entertain a motion on this request. Madam Chair, um, in case number, this is case number 36, right? Um, that is correct, Mr. Banuki. In case number 36, I recommend that the applicant's request be granted in accordance with the site plan and the SCAP report. I have a, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with, chair votes with the, with the motion and the request is granted. Thank you, Ms. Payne. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Enjoy your new deck. <laughs> Okay. We will. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. Um, let's move on to docket number 20. Yep. Ca case number 40 with an address of 8701 East 107th Street. Is the applicant online? I see uh, Mike Conard. I'm going to promote him. Okay. Mike, there are two of you listed as attendees. Um, I just promoted the one that you raised the hand on. I don't tell me if I need to promote the other one once you join. Well, he's my son sitting next to me. I don't, I'm not really. The okay. other one is the PC, so we can see on the big monitor. Oh, you want to, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, promote the other one then. All right, gentlemen, can you unmute so we can hear you? And do you have video so we can see you? I see you. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could I have you each state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Michael Connard. Connard, okay. I am the owner of the property. Okay. Mr. Connard, would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And Mr. Connard, is your son going to be giving any testimony this afternoon? Well, he, he'll help if anything tech, techno that I have to do. I don't do any of this stuff. Okay, fair enough. If he's not going to give testimony, then I don't have to swear him in. That's what I'm asking. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. But, if, but if I have to, we'll swear him in if we get there. Sounds like you can handle this by yourself. He's just the one helping you push the buttons, and I appreciate that. I need a lot of help with that, too, sometimes, so it's all good. All right. Um, Mr. Connard, have you had a chance to look at the staff report that was prepared by the city staff as it relates to your request for variance? I'm not sure what we mean by staff report. It's a, it's a report that discusses your case. Uh, it was online. Did you happen to see that? Yeah, I reviewed uh, the, things okay. that we, the drawings that we submitted, that kind of thing. Well, there should be a written report that Ms. Wood completed. Okay, yeah, I have a thing from Zoo on this. Oh, yep, you do. That, that's it. Okay. So on, on the bottom of that report on page three, there's a list of administrative exhibits that actually number to nine, but I think there are 10 of them, right, Shu? Yeah, 10. All right. Do you have any objection to my admitting the 10 exhibits described in that report that she has prepared? No, not at all. Okay, those exhibits will be admitted. And then Shu, why don't you present your um, your side of it with the video and the presentation and then Mr. Kennard will have questions for you, okay? All right, go ahead, Shu. So this case in front of you is another variance request for an accessory building that exceeds the maximum height. Here's the general location of the site. It is located south of Kansas City. More specifically, it's located on the southeast corner of East 107th Street and Greenwood Road. It is an L-shaped road. It is L-shaped lot uh, with, a, with a front yard facing East 107th Street and a street side yard abutting Greenwood uh, Road. 
currently there is an existing house located to the east side of this site and a couple accessory buildings located on the site with a driveway access as well. Um, the surrounding land use are mostly residential in ranging from R7.5 with single families to R80 and then to R6 to the south of the site and apartments zoned R2.5 on the other side of Greenwood Road. Here's the view looking south from East 107th Street at the subject site. This is another view looking east from Greenwood Road. The subject site is located to your left hand side with a large opening and um, heavily wooded area. So this is a site plan proposed by the applicant. The applicant proposed to build an accessory building to the uh, south side of the current house and the existing accessory structure. And it will be a detached garage and share a driveway access that's extended from the existing driveway access uh, to the north side of this uh, new detached garage. And there are, here are some details of the measurements of the driveway and the concrete driveway and the proposed garage and how they would be ac accessed. Here are some elevations proposed by the applicant. So from the ground to the pitch of the roof, it will be roughly 21.5 feet tall. It will have a couple doors located to the north. One is 10 by 10, one is 10 by 13 and has another porch located to the, um, I believe the east side of the building. So according to our code, the height of the detached garage we would allow will be, the maximum will be 18 feet. Um, and the applicant is proposing an 18 feet um, tall detached garage. So a variance amount of two feet is requested here. I believe I have an applicant's video. Give me one second. See if I can share this one. So, what do you see here is a TIF file um, that I'm not allowed to pause it, but it is a 360 degree of the site where they propose to add this um, accessory structure. That shall conclude my presentation. Okay, thank you, Shu. Um, Mr. Kennard, um, yeah. why, why do you need the extra two feet that you're asking for? What, what, why? Well, I'm trying to achieve a 13 foot high garage door for an RV. Okay. Pull into it. That's the main height issue. I'm still after the, the storage area, but if I'm gonna build this building, I'd like to be able to pull an RV into it. And this is just for storage, correct? You're not running a business out of it. You're not, you're not. Well, I'm a, I run a business out of my house. Okay. And what is that? The, the building won't have anything to do with the business. No. Okay. And, and what is your business that you run out of your house? Just so that we understand that. That's Con it's Connor Plumbing Incorporated. Okay. And so this building is just to store personal items? Correct. Okay. And you understand that it it can't be used for storage of items associated with your home business. Okay. Because if you do, we can't allow that. Okay. Um, well, I won't use it for the business. I got a I got another bit. I got a property at twenty five hundred one free in Kansas City, Kansas, is my main warehouse. Building. And that's where you keep all your plumbing supplies and that type of thing. Yeah. I didn't catch the address. What was the address in KCK, Mr. Kennard? 2501 Furry. Okay. 2501 what? Furry. It's off Southwest Boulevard. Can you spell it? Uh, F E R R E E. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so this extra two feet allows this this door. Will there be storage in the? sort of in the upper rafters of this building? Is that what you're proposing? No, it's for the pitch. Okay, that's what I was trying to understand. I'm after the roof pitch. Okay, all right. All right, board members, do you have questions? 
Mr. Kennard, has your has your neighbors? I noticed there's a there's a development off there. I see some houses off to the off in the video that you provided. Um, are they? Cool. Okay. Are the are the neighbors opposed to what you're what you're constructing or wanting to construct? Well, the two neighbors that I really know, they, they have no objection to it. The one across the street from me and the one located to the east of me, they have no objection with it. Okay. All right, board members, any other questions, comments? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Madam Chair, in case number 40, I move approval in accordance with staff report and site plan. I have a motion from Mr. Kelleher. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Banuki. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The request is granted. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to our final case. Um, Mr. Johnson has waited patiently all afternoon, so let's promote him. Mr. Johnson, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Okay, and do you have video, sir? I, uh, yes, uh, let's see here. There we go. We see you. Thank you. Okay. For your, thank you for your patience. It's hard to be the last one on our docket. Right. I'll try to, <laughs> try to make it fast. All right. That's okay. No, that's all right. We don't. You, we, we'll give you the time you need. So, um, Mr. Johnson, could you state your name, please? Alan Johnson, thirty-five eleven Locust. And would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. All right. Mr. Johnson, have you reviewed the staff report that's con that's been created and uh, connected to your request? I have, yes. Okay. On page two of that report, you will see a list of administrative exhibits. Um, there are 10 of those exhibits. Any objection to those being admitted for the board to consider this afternoon? No, they're all good. Okay. Those 10 exhibits will be admitted. Um, Shu, this is your case. Yes, yeah, it is. Shu, when you're ready, then would you do your presentation? All right. This last case in front of you is a special exception. Here's the general location of the site. More specifically, it is located on the south side of Locust Street in between Armour Boulevard and, uh, and south side of Armour Boulevard. It is currently zoned R5 and with R0.5 um, located to the north side of the site, which I believe is an apartment, and to the south, east, and west side of this subject site, there, most of those are single family uses zone R5. So here's the view looking east from Locust Street at the subject site. The subject site is this um, brick building located in the middle of this um, picture. And this is another view looking west from Locust Street. So the applicant proposes to build a five foot tall iron rod fence that matches with the property located directly to the north. Uh, then the proposed fence will be located at the front yard. And here are some, here's the site map of where this proposed fence would be. It will go from this corner to connect to the neighboring property, the neighboring fence, all the way to running all the way south, and then turn around to the edge of the, um, of the property. And here is the elevation of the front yard of the house and where the fence will be located and what the, fence, the proposed fence would look like. And this picture is located on your bottom right corner of this um, plan. And here's some sampling materials that um, Mr. Johnson provided. It will be black wrought iron. That shall conclude my presentation.
So the, uh, sorry. So the, uh, the special exception Mr. Johnson request is one foot. Uh, we all know that the maximum allowable is four feet and he's proposing five feet. And the Mr. Johnson did provide um, some neighborhood support letters and a map that indicating um, fences that's five foot or above in the neighborhood. And that shall conclude my presentation. Okay. Thank you, Shu. Uh, Mr. Johnson, why, yes. why the five feet? I mean, do you have any crime well, issues? Can you explain to us the basis for that other than it's matching the neighboring property? Sure, there, there's a variety of reasons. My next door neighbor's fence is five feet tall and I wanna tie into it so that it matches the character. Um, the map that Zoo had up, um, over 82% of the houses that have fences in Central Hyde Park are five foot tall. There are maybe, I think there are two or three that are four feet tall and a couple of those are on top of two or three foot high retaining walls uh, which effectively makes them five to seven and a half feet tall. So I, I believe the majority of five foot fences were built prior to the current zoning ordinance and it was then changed to four. And I think it's more architecturally and, and uh, appropriate to have it be a five foot fence. I'm also concerned about security that a four foot fence, anyone can just step over and my 80 pound Labrador can jump over it if, if he wanted to. Um, I'm one lot off of armor, so I'm concerned about trespassing and uh, people breaking into cars. I've had people on my ring camera in my driveway checking the doors on my Jeep. Um, so there's the safety concern about that when I have to get up in the middle of the night to let one of the, one of the dogs go to the bathroom. I believe it would improve my property value and it, in general, is more in um, context for the neighborhood to have a five foot wrought iron fence than um, a four foot fence. Um, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Questions from board members? Okay, does the board understand the request? Hearing no comment, I would entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, for the reasons provided by the, the applicant, I move that uh, his request be granted in, uh, in case, I'm sorry, <laughs> in case number 43, I move that the applicant's request be granted uh, for the reasons he stated and uh, in accordance with the, the site plan and the staff report. I have a motion from Mr. Banuki. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. Kelleher. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes with the motion. The request is granted. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for your patience today. I appreciate your time. All right. All right. And that, I believe, adjourns our meeting. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. Madam Court Reporter, thank you for your help today. I know this has not been easy. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Banuki, you and I need to have a conversation. I'll try to I'll try to reach out to you, okay? Okay. Okay, great. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Hi. <laughs> there goes there goes the Brady bunch.